The views expressed by the previous technical problems is this man talking about? And callers and do not reflect those of the Beasley Broadcast Group. Hey, Robert, you fair. for agencies. The biggest names, the what best is he talking talent. About? Do you have any idea? And your home for Miami Dolphins football. <laughs> Sports Radio 560 WQAM. Oh, Miami. Part of our problem, and by the way, we have many of them, uh, so the research shows lately, is those rejoins and those eyes, that voice and that uh, John Facenda wannabe and all. Oh, that's going to get all the guys tuning in and they're going to think it's John Facenda. Uh, he's been dead for like 20 years. Now. Presents the Neil Rogers Show. Am I right, Chris? Has John Facenda been dead for about 100 years? Um, no idea. Am I right that those rejoins suck? Correct, yes. Or pound 560 on your singular they horizon really good wireless phone. See if he's expressed for about five minutes. His guests or callers do oh, not represent those of Neil. WQAM's management Honors. staff or sponsors. Now, the Neil Rush Show. Come on, Clarence. On Crank it up a little bit, you jackass. Enough with the puking. Coming soon for Nintendo Wii, PlayStation 3, and Xbox 360, the hottest pro hoop game of all time, Tim Donaghy's NBA Point Shaver. NBA Point Shaver. Real players, realistic action, and real betting line. Straddling. Come on, man. You make the calls that decide it all. Tim Donaghy's NBA Point Shaver. Bet the spread or the over and under. The outcome is in your hands. No basket. Three second lane violation. The fix is on, but don't get caught or it's game over. Tim Donaghy's NBA Point Shaver from DA Sports. Unfortunately, it's in the game. Okay, 10 one at 560 WQM. It's a Tuesday, August 28th. We're going to have a barn burner today. Trust me. What, what does that expression mean, by the way, a barn burner? I'm um, sure it had something to do with burning barns at some point. Burning the barn down? Now, was that before or after the hoss got out and the cows and stuff like that? After the cows come home. Oh. And we're going to have a barn burner, and I'm going to tell you one thing right off the bat, and that is that Joel Feinberg is a jerk. You can have a 20 share over there, Joel, and it's only by default. You know, you know what this last ratings trend that we had, what day was that? Friday? Correct. Okay. You know what that really was an indication? It's like a forfeit. Baseball, the final score is 9 to nothing in a forfeit. I don't know what it is in football. Um, is it like 1 to nothing? No. Well, in football, I don't know. I have not either. I've never seen one, so. Yeah, I never have either when you come right down to it. Baseball, I've seen him. 9 to nothing. And that's what's going on. So it's not so much that they're winning, it's that we're losing by default. If we could just have a little more Alex Marvez on here. Oh, what do you know? You're just anti-sports like that little uh, Spick George. Yeah, sure I am. But at any rate, uh, Joel Feinberg, and, and you know, it's interesting because he never at any point said, oh, well, this is all confidential and don't say anything on the air, Neil. He was in Toronto over the weekend and uh, eventually contacted me. Well, you're going to burn your bridges. I'm not going to have any bridges. In fact, how did he contact me, George? He uh, sent me a text, and I forwarded it along to you. And, uh, you know, he sent you a text message, which you forwarded to me on Saturday morning, and I'm thinking to or myself, voicemail what is it? voicemail or something. I saw a number that I didn't recognize. It was voicemail, right. I guess, the first time. and I uh, Whatever the hell it was. And obviously, somebody had your cell phone number who used to work at QAM. See, sure. this is like any this number is, of people. That's correct. Like Geldy or somebody like that. Zach, probably, or, you know, who knows? Zach. Watch your back, Zach. Uh, and so anyway, I get this message from George that in essence says, Joel Feinberg is in Toronto for some stupid-ass car race or something like that, and he wants you to call him. He wants to meet you. What did it say? Joel Feinberg is in Toronto and wants to see if he can meet you. And he's a you. jackass and an idiot and got a personality like a dead man and a, a jerk. So anyway, I thought to myself, well, and of course then you gave me a cell phone number. Yes. And just out of curiosity, I called it because I do have 16 months left in the contract with QAM and being one of the... I, it's not that I'm you know, that much of a goody two-shoes. I'll listen to anybody, you know. But I do have contractual uh, situation involved. And, of course, he sure don't want to be involved in some kind of a tampering thing, which I wouldn't say that he was because nobody ever made any offer or had any real, you know. So I called uh, that cell phone number and it rang and rang and rang. And not even a voicemail. It just rang about 20 times. That, wouldn't you say that's enough uh, times to let a phone ring about 20 Sure, yeah. maybe about thirty, man. About thirty times, yeah, would be good. And there was no, not even a voicemail. I thought, boy. And so the first thing that came to my mind is this is probably not really Joel Feinberg from across the street over at the ticket with his millions of dollars trying to get in touch with Neil Rogers. This is probably somebody a crank, you know. Wouldn't that be your assumption? Yeah, that would come to mind. 
So I called Norma Kent, and Norma, you know, I gave him the number and told him what happened, and we both agreed it probably wouldn't be the greatest idea for me to, you know, be directly talking to the guy who's the uh, man, the mangler across the street for the competition. And so Norma, I guess, made a couple of calls, and finally actually got a return, got a response from Joel Feinberg, who every now and then, when he when he feels like it, uh, answers his cell phone. I, I just, I don't know about you, but, you know, when your cell phone rings, if, if you're around or... Don't you answer it, or do you have a voicemail or something? Yeah, unless I, I don't, don't recognize the number, and then I don't. Yeah, but when you're trying to get in touch with somebody, if you saw... Right, if, if I'm expecting saw, a call, absolutely. If you were expecting a call from somebody in Toronto, right. and you don't know a anybody in Toronto, and you saw that number right. on there with a uh, 416 area code, wouldn't you say, oh, maybe that's Neil calling, I better pick that up? Yeah, I would. Well, to make a long story short, so there was no conversation until later on, and then the Saturday night, about 8.45, I get another text from George... In fact, you didn't text me on the... You called me, didn't you? You called me no, Saturday I, morning. No, I forwarded, your, I, I forwarded the text to you as an email. No, you called me. I didn't. Let me say it again. All right. You called me. I called you. First. Okay. Are you, are you getting old-timer's disease? Sure, whatever you say, man. I, I called you. Whatever you say, I'm going to do I'll tell you it. what. I can, I can find out. You want me to look in my uh, phone? Sure, here? i got a call log, too. And see the phone call logs? I, let me call log. I might have already... Uh, uh -huh. I don't. I keep mine forever. Saturday. No, I probably erased it already. I didn't. Well, you, did you make one? I have a call log. Yeah, and you didn't make a call. I didn't. I, I, uh, I'm telling you right. right now, you called me, okay? okay I'm not a crazy person. You. I saw gas I called light. you, Neil. You did. I called you. And you said, uh, really, uh, you know, unusual for me to Please bother tell you me on the weekend, I yeah. but I got this voicemail and blah, 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 or this text message. Okay. I'm going to forward it to you and we yada, yada. I said, okay. Okay. That's that's what happened. Okay. We had a conversation. Okay. You you are losing it, man. Okay. Here is a man Gone. who is the victim of circumcised. That's right. Lost my mind a long time ago. Uh, evidently. Well, anyway, to make a long story short, so on Sunday... Or let's see, Saturday night, I get another message. This time it was only a text message, not a call, from George saying, Oh, uh, he messaged me again saying, Neil's uh, agent is jerking me around and blah, 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 and uh, all I want to do is talk to him and get to know him and blah, blah. Ha please have him call me. Now, is that fairly close to what it said, that second text message? Yes, yes, yes. And so, you know, I came back into my apartment here and I thought, well, I'll call and see what the hell this guy wants. You know, I'll try to size him up on the phone and see what this is all about. Because obviously we're drowning here at QAM, uh, and we're giving them, we're handing the ball over to them strictly by default. See, they thought here once they signed the Dolphins, that was going to turn things around. And boy, did it ever. Rectum. Wow. I mean, who, who cares that we got the Dolphins? Why is that such a big deal? Well, it's a prestige thing. Well, it's obviously having a tremendous impact, Joe. <laughs> Isn't it? They always keep saying that. I'm, yeah. just, I'm tired of hearing that. It's a prestige thing. So anyway, I called on um, Saturday night after you sent me the second message, and guess what? He answered the phone. Wow. How do you like that? Oh, my God. And I said, Joel? And he said, yeah. I said, Neil Rogers. Oh, how are you? How are you? Th this was, you know, it's hard to size somebody up on the phone. Sure. sure. It's not really fair to people, but I thought to myself, this guy's a jerk. Everybody, Everybody I've known from Joe Rose and everybody else who's ever over there has said that he's a total jerk and you know and he is he's just a jerk he's got a personality like a like a old sponge you know and of course his daddy's got a lot of money so therefore he's a big shot and they just had this one see they've been on the air for like two and a half years and they've had three months where they've had a big gigantic trend and right away that makes them uh, big broadcasters I guess in their mind even though most of the crap that they have on the air is exactly that it's crap non-broadcast people and, well, I just wanted to, uh, you know, get to know you and get to meet you. I'm here and uh, I'm not, uh, and he's trying to figure out where the hell he is in the city, which he hasn't got any clue. There's that big needle thing up in the sky, you know, the CN Tower, that needle. Yeah. And so I agreed to meet him on, uh, this was Saturday night, on Sunday morning at noon. Sunday afternoon at noon, whatever that is. And uh, then I thought about it and I called Norma Kent again. I said, I think it's a bad idea. I think there are some legal issues here that we could be... And I'm sure he's, like, having a nervous breakdown. I'm discussing it on the air. Too bad, Joel. That's the way it goes. You uh, you, you extended your uh, ass toward me. It wasn't the other way around. And so, to make a long story short, Sunday morning, Norma uh, uh, called, tried to call him again, didn't answer the phone. Second time, finally got a voicemail that must come on the 80th ring and left him a message saying, well, we've discussed it and decided it's not a good idea, blah, blah, blah. So, before he left town... 
he called Norma back to tell him, uh, well, you know, I don't deal with middlemen. I make a lot of big deals on my own, and uh, I don't have to deal with middlemen, meaning Norma, the um, and Norma said, I'm not a middleman. I'm Neil's agent, have been for over 20 years. Well, I don't deal with middlemen. And Neil's been begging me to save him for years now. Now, what would you assume that that means? Neil's been begging me to save him? I don't know. You're, you know, you're floundering over here, and uh, yeah. you know, you're not making any money. I'm not, so, I can't, uh, right. don't have two nickels to rub together. Is that what it is? Yeah, done? yeah. And so you want somebody to throw you a light. I've been begging him. I, I can't recall ever, ever saying rope. anything on the air to indicate that I want to go over there, that I would go over there, or want anything to do with him, or that, uh, you know, well, you're burning your bridges. Let me say it again. There are no bridges. There are never going to be any bridges. I'd rather go out on my balcony here, <coughs> way high up in the high rise I live in, and jump than uh, work for him. So go away, Joel, okay? I'm not interested. I'll tear up your cell phone number. Just get lost. Now, I will say this. He said in that very jackass article he wouldn't touch Hank with a 10-foot pole. I guess he'd touch me with about an 80-foot pole, huh? Don't touch me. Don't call me. Stay out of my life. Stay out of my face. This is a toilet. There's no question about that. But the check's still clear every two weeks, and uh, that's the way it is. And I might spend the whole show today talking about this place and about the people who are destroying it. And, you know, those people who are regular listeners, the ten that we have left, they know that I've been screaming about these things for a long time. And no listen to me, or certainly not to George. I mean, what could he know? Right. So I may rant and rave. You know, because oh, I'm only on two days a week this please week don't. and then again next week. Please, please don't. <laughs> so the technical defugalities are straightened out. Is that correct? No. 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 They're not? He's still roboticizing no. every now and again, but it's all right. It's, every uh, once in a while, there's still spicy. There's, a, yeah, you there's a little digital thing there in the yeah. phone line, and it's nothing that we have any control over this morning. We've tried, you know. And Kenny Walker there at the end, oh, I sure hope Neil's technical problems. Is Neil okay? But go away, Kenny. You're a silly person, okay? Rock and roll talk show. Like that, you know, kind of like the booster, you know. Rock and roll talk radio. What has happened to the radio business? Haven't I told you for years that it's uh, on the way out? Now it's finished. It's out the, uh, out the window. Take your radio and shovel it down the toilet. That's my best suggestion to you. Even the one in your car. Just yank it out of the dashboard there and just shove it down the toilet. Isn't that a good idea? Right. And then get some... Uh, no, don't tell me you're eating the Howie's again this morning. You know it. Twelve minutes after ten at five sixty WQM, we got the Mad Dog at two. The Power Hour with Hank and the Mad Dog together four to five. Boy, this looks like a real schedule day. Humper is back from five to six thirty, and then you got the Marlins game. The Marlins who lose, who get walloped every day now. Marlins and the Braves pregame at six thirty. The game is seven oh five, followed by game night with Eddie K. That's our lineup, which is pretty close to normal. And then once we get rid of those Marlins, once we unload that swill, what was that score yesterday? Thirteen to two. Trace Ados. I think that's what it was. Yeah, I believe that's what. It and the two on the Marlins side. Boy, they, they lose almost every day. They may not be good, but at least they're consistent. Hey, all you culinary experts in South Florida, you'll never believe who's back on here with us and fighting the fight against high gas prices by creating his own gas. It's nobody else than Crazy John from Little Old Caboose. Get that great taste of those square little mystery meat burgers from the Little Old Caboose in Deerfield with those grilled onions on top, a shot of ketchup, mustard, or both. Now, don't you like the way it says a shot of ketchup? Now, you know that's Petey Murray. You know yes. how certain people speak and write and say do things yes. a certain way? Yes. A shot of ketchup. Much. Speaking of a shot, there are many people in our sales department who want to be. Neil? God? Can't believe that 30 years ago, 30 years ago, the king died. Now he's got more fans than ever before. He's worth more dead than alive. There's a thousand helmets and personators working out there. Some are real cheesy, but I don't care. For collectibles, I got cash to spare. I'm crazy about Elvis. <laughs> crazy about Elvis. How oh, I wish that there was more Elvis memorabilia sold on eBay. There's even more stuff I cannot afford. I'd stay on the computer all day. Oh, there's lamps, hot decanters, and wall tapestries. Velvet paintings of the Hawaii. There's one look in my trailer, it's easy to see. I'm crazy about Elvis. All right. Crazy about Elvis. Absolutely. Crazy, crazy about Elvis. WQAM, hello. Hola. We had one caller on the board. Mm -hmm. Are we still in contact here or what? 
with each other? Yes, sure. Well, I don't know the way things are going this morning with all these technical hiccups and screw-ups. I punched up line six, and I see the arrow there, but there's nobody on there. Maybe he got scared. Maybe he got scared and ran away. Maybe it was Joel Feinberg again trying to, like, reset up uh, our lunch appointment. Five six uh, five sixty pound five sixty on the Verizon and Singular Wireless lines. We will take calls if we get any. Let's put it that way. Here's the poll result from Georgia's very mediocre poll yesterday. Boy, it sucked. In fact, you had seven hundred and thirty-two votes total, and I know you put this on there early, and it still didn't help. No, we got seven sixty-eight already today. How do you like that? Nah, 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 nah. And you did call me by the way Saturday. I'm yes, really I worried. What? Yes, I did. You, oh, you admitted I, finally. I remembered. <laughs> It was 10 in the morning. I was just waking up. Yeah. And you said, uh, and I got all panicky. Yeah. I thought somebody must have died or something. Why is George calling me on a Saturday morning? Which characteristic irritates you the most about women in South Florida? 732 votes on George's poll yesterday. Materialistic or greedy, 161. This poll is so bad, I don't even want to read it. No spaghetti and glaze, 59. That's really... Incredibly. Conceited or arrogant, 56. Lack of education, 54. Loud, obnoxious tone of voice, 40. Like the nanny. In fact, that, that's what I told Norma after I talked to Joel Feinberg. I said, he's like a male nanny. Can you, do you understand what I'm saying? <laughs> Whiny, yeah, like that. That's right. Overweight or obese, 39. Bad driver, 38. Uh, obvious plastic surgery, artificial parts, 36. Artificial parts. Woo! Know-it-all attitude, 34. Selfishness, 33. Bad temper or confrontational attitude, 24. No sense of humor, 21. That was my vote. That's why we have no uh, female audience. Low credit score, 19. Impolite, 19. Parochial, 14. Clingy, 12. Clingy. I think possessive would have been a better word, but clingy is okay. Too much makeup, 12. Fearful or suspicious, 11. Drunk or chemically dependent, 10. Frigid or puritanical, 8. Poor work ethic, 8. Unfaithful or disloyal, 6. Poor hygiene, 5. Excessively promiscuous, 5. Excessively, not just, you know. No clothes sense, 5. And too skinny, 3 out of 732. WQA and hello. Hello, Neil. How are you? Okay, sir. I love you. This is Jesus Christ. Yeah, okay. Drop dead. 700. How can, how can you keep putting him back on? He's a, he's a new chronic. Yeah, I, I haven't yeah. figured out his voice yet. That's you cool. haven't figured him out? Yeah, he does have a very dull... You no. Know, 774 votes on today's pool, which sure as hell beats uh, the total you had yesterday. But this is Charlie B's, and we've already done this 100 times. But that's okay, Charlie. It always gets a good response. And we'll do 1,000 today, Chris, whether you like it or not. Cool. Which group in our society is the most discriminated against? It's like a peeing contest, you know. They're picking on us more. Blacks, 176. Gays, 128. Ugly people, 104. What about ugly black gays? Oh, good luck to them. That's atheist, 79. What about... And fat people, 78. What about a fat, ugly, atheist, black, gay person? Who's also handicapped. Handicapped people, 44. Oh. Muslims, 38. Oh, my God. Immigrants, 37. The elderly, 27. Old people like me. Jews, 21. Old Jews. Boy, I got some real, uh, I got several categories covered on here. Fat, atheist, gay, ugly, Jew, old. Short people, 16. Women, 14. Dumb people, 13. And his mente siete, only seven. Wow, out of 72. WQAM, hello. Male. Yes, sir. Obviously, Chris is failing. No, okay, good. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil, how you doing? Okay, sir. Hey, listen, uh, I really like George's show now. He's coming to his own, but he's got to take a uh, survey or a poll on that Lucy bitch because she's, uh, she's got the Spanglish baby talk thing going. It, it, if you haven't heard it, it's... Um, of course I haven't heard it. When would I hear it? You, listen to me. It's, it's, it's brutal, Neil. I like George's show, but I mm -hmm. can't listen to her. Um, and, and second, uh, now that... Uh, well, how I often sit, is she on? Uh, I've heard her twice. How often is she on, George? Every once in a while. And um, everybody loves her. We get like nine out of ten people say that she's hysterical and she is hysterical. Because they think they're going to get laid. Oh, it's, yeah, that's what. They're going to get laid on the radio. That's they, what it is. Exactly. Yeah. They yeah. think there's a pretty girl on the radio. There's a shot. Maybe they'll get laid. If she's hysterical. It's not. I'm telling you, Neil, tune in. Nine out of ten no, people say she's hysterical. No, I will not tune in and uh, whatever. Then don't listen when she's on. WQAM, hello. Morning, Neil. How are you? Okay, sir. Okay, I agree with you that the nanny, she had that whiny voice, and it was, no matter how beautiful she may be on TV, that voice just was a big turnoff. Wait, wait a minute. You tell me that Fran Drescher was beautiful? She was She was not the most gorgeous woman in the world, but, she, you know, she was She was decent, I, I would say. But her voice was just, it was incredible. I, I think she, I think she looked it. just like she sounded like. 
Okay, well, you know, that, that's your opinion, but that's my opinion. The other thing was uh, Lucy Lopez. Oh, yeah, she's very beautiful, right? Smart, intelligent. Well, how do you know she's very beautiful on the radio? Because you, we, see, we see her on the website. And oh, I said that's right. And, and George, George, and the, George and her are a very good team, but sometimes she does have that whiny voice. I don't know oh. if she hangs out with too many not that, Not that Spanglish time. baby talk I think I was talking about. That sometimes drives me crazy. Her, sometimes it gets a little bit whiny. And I mean, mm. she's smart and she makes us laugh, but she's got to cut down on that whiny stuff. Okay, cut, quit being so whiny, Lucy. Slap around a little bit, George. You're good at that. Sure, why not? We'll work on that. 792 on today's pool. I don't want to start giving those numbers out. That guy will call back again. Oh, you're sending it. You're mailing it in. I got news for you after seeing the trends on Friday. Maybe we're mailing it in, but at least we got a postage meter that works. You know what I'm saying? I think the rest of the station may have run out of postage stamps. We ought to send somebody out on the street corner there, Ives Dairy and, um, and 441, and maybe collect some postage stamps so our, our guys can mail it in. You're mailing it in, Neil. WQAM, hello. Uncle Neil, how's it going? Okay, sir. I'm the guy who crammed your arbitrons with, like, said I had a thousand people in my family. When so was, was that? Like, you know, uh, it was back in March or April. Oh, well, thank you so much. We, we, I, we, you know, we wish you get the diaries again, though. Yeah, well, hopefully I will, and I'll do the same thing. I'll probably add a few more people to my family, though. Okay, good. Uncle Neil, there's this guy, one of those homeless boys, guys out here, Dykes and Sheridan, waving his arms over his head. I think he's PO'd because he had, didn't get any money today or something, but so maybe somebody should, you know, throw a nickel on the ground and make him happy or something. Or just like, put him out of his misery. Sounds good to me. What just happened to him? He hung up. Very abruptly for a guy yeah, who's a friend of ours. I know. Well, it's it's South Florida, I think maybe. he was done. We have 800 votes on the pool. I can't believe that. 800, it's not even 1030 yet, for Christ's sake. You don't know if somebody was listening to this crap. When it comes to sports. Oh. Sports. Did he say sports? sports? Give me that, that ball, baby. Give me the ball. Give me the ball, Clarence. Come one, come all. It's really getting scary is what it is. Is it me or is it... Uh, it's getting scary. It's not you. Trust me. Men who like talking about other guys Are usually hiding from what they realize They want their nose in an athlete's life It's the yellow truck strap All right Much like in sport fools conceal their fear Like talking about sports while drinking a beer They desire, of course, to be a submissive queer For some yellow truck strap Yellow drop scratch, yellow drop scratch. Only queers want to hear sports all day. Yellow drop scratch, yellow drop scratch. The management here is undeniably gay. Anyone who wants to hear your sports will stink a day. Is dreaming about a lot of rules, goes and shower spray. Yellow drop scratch. You carry. Hey, how about those dolphins? What a game they play. And somebody's kid with the hurricanes You talk about it all the time Ain't you a maggot, I'm afraid You like yellow jot straps Turning and burning out morning shows No interest in learning about radio Just a sausage party for a few sport homos You like yellow jot straps oh! Yellow jot straps Yellow drop straps, sport holds his knees, who are in out. Yellow drop straps, yellow drop straps, they're on your mind to be in your mouth. Sports spike, 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 sports sports all day, thank you, Jerry. Sports all day, thank you, Jerry. Sports all day. Thank you. Good. By the way, Joel Feinberg, if you really want to know my opinion on the crap that you put on the air, um, it's uh, garbage. It's 99% of it. And, they, and anybody they had on it was good. Crap. Like Joe Rose is already leaving because he can't stand you either. He thinks you're a real jerk. And he's right. Don't ever darken my life again, Joel Feinberg, you jackass. You fairy. God. He's in Toronto. Well, so are five million other people, okay? That doesn't mean he's got to try to, uh, you know, muscle into my life and also be uh, muscling into your uh, voicemail and uh, email and stuff. Am I right? Yeah, whatever. Like, I was uh, busy. So, Alberto V05 Gonzalez is gone. That's, uh, I don't want to hear about that anymore. And Michael Vick pleads guilty. I don't want to hear about him ever again. Slimeball. 
The big story, though, now, and this is an old story from a month ago. U.S. Republican Senator Larry Craig yesterday denied inappropriate conduct. This is another one of those right-wing Republican phony baloney faggots. Yeah, I saw that story. After he was arrested by police investigating alleged lewd incidents in an airport bathroom. Oh, no. Again with that. I wonder, you notice Bo Camper uh, isn't on tomorrow or uh, Thursday. It's Kenny and O.J. He's probably going to go there to investigate. Tea room hijinks. <laughs> Craig was arrested in the Midwest of Minneapolis, St. Paul in June by a plainclothes officer, the Roll Call newspaper, which covers Congress reported. Citing court documents, Roll Call said Craig, 62, pleaded guilty this month to misdemeanor disorderly conduct and paid more than $500 in fines and fees, had a 10-day uh, jail sentence stayed. Shortly after news of the incident broke on the newspaper's website, Craig, who re represents the state of Idaho, issued a statement saying he had erred by admitting wrongdoing. At the time of the incident, I complained to the police they were misconstruing my actions. I was not involved in any inappropriate conduct, said Craig, who was married and up for re-election in 2008. And there's a whole bunch of queens who have uh, talked about publicly about having had sex with uh, Larry Craig, right-wing, homophobic, uh, married, uh, phony, baloney Republican. I should have had the advice of counsel in resolving this matter. He said, in hindsight, I should not have pled guilty. I was trying to handle this matter myself quickly and expeditiously, he said. The report, are you cracking your knuckles yes, again? Yes, I am. Well, it's a good thing we got a really good connection then, because I could hear that loud and queer. Your what? The report quoted a plainclothes police officer who said, oh, and how come we don't have white people on the poll? The uh, professor uh, sent me a, a message on that, a text message saying, well, you know, what's wrong with white people? Because they rule the world and uh, so. Well, you know, well, there's some people who vote for that because sure, they feel picked upon. I put white handicapped people, people on there just the so poll, And white people can be, uh, you know, pulling up the ass end. The report quoted a plainclothes police officer saying Craig was seated in the stall in the bathroom and had made gestures consistent with someone wishing to engage in lewd contact. <laughs> what does that look like? At least one Republican presidential campaign <laughs> was affected by the report. Senator Larry Craig, but uh, Mitt Romney's top backers in the Senate. Jonathan Martin writes at uh, Politico, a clip of Craig praising Romney was up until this moment ago on Romney's YouTube channel, but now listed as a private video. They pulled it. They yanked it. The plain clothes cop said that uh, Craig tapped his foot. Maybe he was just listening to his iPod, you know, and listening to a can. <laughs> tapped his foot and? Oh, oh man, boy. I've lost him. Great. I ain't in the mood for this. You gotta go home? Are we gonna wait? I don't even have a song ready. Slacker. Shoot on a cough drop. I'm a slacker. I'm over here doing arts and crafts for Christ's sakes. Are we gonna wait for him to come back? I mean, listen, he catches wind that he's uh, been disconnected and uh, we're having all these problems today. He's just gonna, you know, bag it, as we say in the Northwest. He like would never do that over here. He would bag it. He's going to get up and leave. We have to pretend like, um, you know, when he comes back, like... Uh, he's been here the whole time? He's been here the whole time, and we know exactly what he was saying. So we should just laugh when he starts talking again? Absolutely. I mean... Absolutely. I mean, I'm sitting here with a cough drop in my mouth, putting the finishing touches on the CD I'm working on. Jesus Christ. I didn't mean to do this. Look, look what I have on my show notes today. Oh, it's a blank page. It's a blank page. I haven't even looked. Because, see, look at yesterday. That's what it's supposed to look like. All full of stuff and nonsense and everything. I have nothing going on today. I got old stuff. Who's on the hotline, for Christ's sakes? Is it Neil? <laughs> Put him on. Oh, I, yeah, I got to punch him on. Neil Rogers Show. <laughs> <laughs> well, they, they must be screwing around again back there. Uh, uh, I don't know. You just disappeared and, uh, you know... Well, I'm going to do a music show if you stick me with this thing today, I'll tell you. Is that when I said he was tapping his foot? And I, they yeah, I said he was tapping his foot, and then uh, I think it must have meant something. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's it. I said he was listening going. to his iPod, listening to a catchy tune. Well, how is this possible? I'm going to have to do the show on the phone today? What do you mean, how is it possible? You know how it's possible. Yeah, it's QAM. It's a QAM sure. every stinking day. Every stinking day, it's the same crap. A technical horror show is what it is. Mm -hmm. Other than that. Yeah, I get paid. So, so, so what are we going to do? Am I going to like do uh, the whole... How does it sound on my... Uh, it's <laughs> like hell. Um, it sounds... I mean, we can hear you loud and queer, but, uh, you know, it sounds like you're on a phone. And, wh and what's happening with the other stuff? I don't know, but Joe Bell just peeked his head in here. Oh, Joe Bell just peeked his head in there. Well, isn't that great? He might actually uh, have discovered that our technical uh, incompetence is uh, reaching a new level. Joe Bell just peeked his head in there to see what? 
Uh, to see, see what you can a, see. To see. To see what a studio looks like? To see Saw. To see K. Did he tap his foot? No, thank God. He didn't give me any uh, signals like that. Oh, thank God for that. I, I don't know what the signals are. You'll have to go over those with us for the audience. Yeah. What those uh, tea room signals are, the little uh, those little hand signs and foot signs and whatnot. Are they still, is the engineering still mucking around with this line or what? Are, I, they, I, they, I don't know. I, I suggest we go into because a break and then uh, see what's going on. Yeah, go ahead, Chris. See what they're uh, doing if they're I doing anything. Fine. This is just wonderful. I, I did hear, you know, this morning that they were calling AT and T to see what the deal was with the. Oh, great! Blah, blah, blah. Good. They're calling AT and T. Why couldn't they wait till like later on? I could have fed some uh, audio from the TV and walked out of here at two o'clock. No problem. What did I say? At ten to ten. Don't potchki around now. Did I say that? I was yeah. Oh, I think they were already in mid potchki though when you said that. Oh, for Christ's sakes! What a. They were halfway a, between, between potch and key. Mm-hmm. All right. All the engineers are running around right now. So. Oh, good. Let's prop the door open. I like to see people running up and down oh, the hall. Oh, let's do the break. I can play the rejoin, but you wouldn't hear it. So what there is to me? Right. Well, I can play the. Uh, I can play the. Uh, Here we go. Hey, go ahead and play. When it comes to entertainment, we've got the biggest. This station stands for nothing. No. Absolutely. I agree. So we're back for sure. We're back. Sounds good. Thanks. So far. They were good toys. Sure loved Elmo, loved Barbie, and Polly Pocket too. They were good toys, but could be deadly, choking hazard with lead paint too. I'm scared. Says made in China, they're not known for quality control. They're selling bad toys, and the kids are gonna miss them. Yes, they're bad toys, and they have to go. So they're free. I think they ought to recall the equipment from QAM is what they ought to do. Come on, let's let's get serious for Christ's sakes, Jolly Joe. Like I said, we're not competing, we're forfeiting. Did I say that to you a long time ago yep. on this show? Months ago? I said we're not even competing. We're not promoting. We're not putting stuff on the air that anybody wants to hear. We've handed the keys to the kingdom over to a bunch of sports writers who nobody reads their columns. Nobody wants to hear them on the radio. And they're not broadcasters, okay? Which seems to be the criterion for uh, whether somebody's going to be on the earnest mark or not. If you're not a broadcaster, poof. <laughs> and we'll make you one. It's a good thing we got the line back because my battery wasn't going to last the whole four hours. No, I don't imagine. Down to 90%. That's not good. That's the same BlackBerry that you called me on Saturday morning, by the way, to tell me that Joel Feinberg was in Toronto and wanted, wanted me to call him. That one? The same one? I bet you Joe Bell's all whipped up about that, too. Oh, they're tampering. Yeah, tamper with this, okay, Joe? Tamper with the equipment. Maybe that's why he came over here. For what? Because of, well, what, and what were you going to tell him about it? Oh, I was going to give him all the scoop. While we're trying desperately to get on the air. Give them two scoops. Yeah. 850 votes on our award-winning poll for the guy that doesn't like the numbers. You're mailing it in, Neil! You know something? If I had a postage meter up here, I'd be more than happy to mail it in. Because it would save a lot of grief and a lot of tourists. At least uh, FedEx works really great. You get it the next day. Sure. (laughs) Great. Gone again? Looks like it. QAM, not the Neil Rogers show. Yep. Oh, oh, the street. Wait, there he is. What? Coming back. Oh, nothing. Nothing, nothing, at, nothing, nothing, nothing at all. No, you're, you're Absolutely not. nothing. Keep going. No, you're cutting out now. Oh, great. Why won't they leave it alone back there? We had it going, and then during the last break, well, you, don't you cut know out for a while. Back there. We don't know if it's them doing something. Yeah, somebody, no, of course, they'll lie about it. I mean, when we showed up this morning, it was all ungapachki. Now, you know the difference between Sid the Kid and Don Imus? No. Nope. Besides the fact that Imus is unemployed? Well, uh, can you understand Age. what Sid is saying? Sid has a pulse. Ah. That, that's about all I'll say for him. And then, you know, he's getting this number. Don't ask me how. Don't ask me how. And, and like I said before, by default, how many more days of the Kenny and Bo abortion on this station? Three more days? 
Is mm-hmm. that correct? I don't In know. fact, on Thursday, it's not even Kenny and Bo, it's Kenny and O.J. Kenny and O.J. who gets rewarded for uh, that grotesque behavior of his, uh, trying to stir up a bunch of racial phony crap with me, um, and by being put back on the air again. It's just, it's just an incessant slap in the face when you work for these people. So, yeah, Joel, I'm real unhappy with the, the Beasleys and with fat-ass Jolly Joel and with Clarence and with Joyce. And you know what? The check's still clear, okay? And you ain't got no story over there. You got, you know, you got a trend. Big deal. 854 votes. Which group in our society is most discriminated against? White people got uh, two votes, which means the professor voted twice. You're cheating. Blacks, 196. Gays, 135. Ugly people, 112. Fat people, 89. I think fat people ought to be doing better than that. Don't you? Yeah, no, they are discriminated against. There's no question. Fat people take a lot of crap, man. Right, and I'm one of them. In more ways than one. Oh, are you fat now? No, no, I'm one of the ones that discriminates against them. Oh, I don't blame you. Me too. I won't touch them. Atheists, 80. Handicapped people, 49. Muslims, 43. Immigrants, 43. The elderly, 28. Jews, 22. Jews, 22. That sounds like a, like a radio station if you could have a frequency of 22. Jew, and, of course, if 22. we could find a spot on a dial of 22, we'd go on there because we got all the Jews and jocks. Short people, uh, 19. Women, 14. Dumb people, 13. See, I can't buy into that because dumb people deserve... <laughs> Bless you. They deserve whatever crap they get. Uh, Hispanics, 9. And whites... Solamente dos, but but two votes for white people out of 854. We're going to do that thousand easy, okay? I don't like that. In spite, in spite of Jolly Joe Bell, in spite of this potching around with our equipment that goes on every single day, this seems to be a new deal. I'm sitting here this morning, and I'm waiting for you to, like, say something, like usual, about 825, 820. Right. And I hear you come out and say, yo, yo, and I'm, I think you can hear me, you know, mm-hmm. and you can't. Right. And now I'm screaming, like, what's going on? Finally, I called you. See, I do remember right. calling you. Mm-hmm. And we were having issues again. And be that, part of the reason, I'm sure, is because every single day there are people in there playing. It's like, it's like an erector set. They're playing Tinker Toys with our studio. And Clarence don't give a crap about that because, obviously, you know, if, if there's sports stuff going on, then they need to be in there uh, potching around and doing their Tinker Toy crap because it's a lot more important than what's on between 10 and 2. No question. WQAM, hello. Uh, Neil, when you talk about the radio show, you're talking about priorities, and uh, sports-intensive radio uh, is their priority, and, uh, you know, I'm just saying you're not sports-intensive. So, uh, in other words, can you move on to another radio station? Well, what does that mean? In other words, even though you have a contract in other words, them, if they yeah. buy you out, if they buy you out... Who, who says they're going to buy me out? If they buy me out, I will kiss your ass. How do you, sir, I will kiss you over every part of your really? body if they oh, buy you. me out. I'll meet you at Papa Park. We could have a party. Okay, sounds good. I'll see you there at 6. Tap your foot. Tap your pardon? Tap your foot. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you tap your foot and I'll tap my root. Oh, God. That, that's when we got cut off as soon as I said tap your root. We got cut off. I'm sure that was a Joyce thing. She She's probably got a new big red button over there in Naples, you know. To go with the red rubber ball? Like, Huh? Yeah, she's got a big red button. Like, what's his name? He used to at CKLW, Paul Drew. He was a crazy per- He was the PD. And he had a button that would, like, you know, even if he was in a restaurant somewhere and he was listening all the time, that was way, way many years before they had iPods. But he obviously had, like, a little transistor sister. Uh-huh. And if the DJs said or did anything on the air that he didn't like, he would, like, hit the button and a big light, big bulb, a big light bulb would light up. Like, oh, jeez. Paul Drew was listening. I'm pretty sure it was Paul Drew. Huh. And, and, and what was that supposed to mean? You better. Uh, that was supposed to mean you better cut the crap right, because no. I heard it and you're, heard uh, that. you're, you're going to be fired in it, baby. You're going to be <laughs> like that. See, oh, Joyce heard Uh-oh. that. Uh oh. Did the light go off? Yeah, several. Uh oh. <laughs> There's some more. <laughs> warning lights. WQAM, All Fart Radio. Hello. Hey, good morning, Neil. Yes, sir. It sounded like that guy was doing the limbo rock in the bathroom at the airport there. Yeah, he maybe it was an import from Westland. Now, the thing is, about Sid the Kid, basically that radio show is New York Yankees mm-hmm. and New York Giants football. That's all they talk yeah. about. Yeah, obnoxious so New York. So so I, I have never heard anybody, and I've talked to a lot of people who have heard him, I've never heard anybody say one positive word about and him, that, about that, the show, about what horrendous. crap he's putting on the air. That is horrendous. Yeah. He's got mush mouth. Good night, Neil. Bye. See ya.
But we got Kenny and Bo for another few days. A show that I wouldn't wish on Hitler and Idi Amin and uh, Osama Yamama. That's the Kenny and Bo morning show. <laughs> but they do like uh, Jim Nogger a lot on that show. That, that really went over there. Uh, they, they're doing one shares in there. Do you understand? I mean, how do they even show up in there without, like, uh, do they kind of, like, slink through the hallway, like, uh, hope nobody sees us, and kind of, like, slink on the way out? Like a, like a walking slinky? You know what I mean? I, I do. Well, I would. If I had one shares on this radio station, I would slink around. Of course, we know somebody else do, 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 do. when he was on two to four was doing a one share, and somebody else who also picked up the uh, ball there and still continued doing one shares. Uh, what did I say back in those days when we saw those numbers? I said, you know, this is the beginning of the end. The handwriting's on the wall. Even Daniel and the Lions then saw the handwriting in any language, reading from uh, right to left. And he went, Oi! And Jolly Joe is like, ah, but a beep, but a boop, but a bop. Hey, Neil, how come they came so close to us today? Oh, it must have been George's fault, Joe. WQAM, hello. Oh, uh, yes, I, I slipped my father's dentures into my rectum. And Good, well, it must be getting really crowded in there. Rectum. Okay, every day he calls us with more, more artifacts that are uh, deep inside of his rectum. Boy. Hey, could you share your colon cleanse? Five six seven oh five sixty. Let's get these phones going again. Let's try to revitalize this damn radio station while these people Rome is burning and these people are fiddling and Jolly Joe stuck his head in the uh, thing there. You know, if you would have been thinking, Chris, fast enough, of course, fat, being fat, you're slow on your feet and slow on your ass. You would have gone there and slammed the door in his head and done us all a big service. <laughs> well, oh, yeah, God. I do still need to draw a check. I mean, you know, would have been. Well, yeah. I do a pencil and paper. I, I, would have, I would have more than I'd have covered it and doubled it. Okay. Hey, Joe, can you come back over here, please? <laughs> WQAM, hello. Why is George so scared of Reverend Jones? WQAM, hello. Neil. Neil. Yes. Hey, uh, Joe can't get there quick enough. Joe Rose can't get there quick enough, huh? Amen. Yeah, it should be like it was, what was that, four or five years ago when he was there? It was he in the morning and then... Well, what do you mean it then? should be? Like, all of a sudden, magically, everybody's going to come back. You see, one of the problems is, other than you, uh, uh, those people listening right now, who knows that Joe Rose is coming back to QAM? Unless they read Barry Jackass. I mean, who, who even knows? Are there any billboards up saying anything about it? Yeah, the great promotions department. So. Yeah, well, we don't have the money because the Marlins are costing us a fortune. The Marlins that lose every day, you know that team? Oi, oi. Yeah, toss, yeah. And toss them, toss the Panthers, and uh, now you got the Dolphins. That should do wonders for the race. Yeah, that really, that sure turned it around, didn't it? <laughs> Have a great day, Pally. See ya. The day that the day they announced that we got the right to the Dolphins back, that's when things started really going downhill fast, fast. And then, of course, we got these great that voice. The biggest name. Oh my God! You know. John Vicente Jr., Airzots. Yeah, he's got a big voice. Big deal. And people are thinking, oh, my God, will you stop playing that crap? Don't, don't let me play that uh, first one again. I just started to play that. All right, don't. Don't play it. Don't do it. I mean, wouldn't it be nice if we had, like, a little variety? How, um, they must obviously pay this guy. Just pay the sports writers. Can you imagine? How would you like to have in a tax-exempt bank account somewhere in Switzerland, oh. how'd you like to have the money that they pee away on crap? Uh, on, on the trips and all the, uh, yeah. the staff the, to the, go out to the, cover uh, this game and that one. And what's all the thing, the, that the combine, the NFL oh. combine that they send the big O to and about the sports writers that they're paying. And then then they got the chutzpah. Kenny Walker's got the gall to be saying, oh, Alex, thank you so much for stopping by as if he's doing it out of the kindness of his heart. He's on the payroll, you idiot. We're paying him to come by and destroy your show, you simpleton, you moron. You fair. God. I mean, you told me Kenny is, you know, not a bad guy, but I'm... Nice guy. I, I, huh? Very nice guy. Is he? Well, there's yes. a lot of nice guys, but they don't belong on a radio. Do you know what I mean by that? I do. I, I know a lot of li nice people that don't belong on the radio. Right, that's correct. And most of them are working for us and across the street. Right. Of course, the Your station been... blows, by the way, Joel. If you think you've got a lineup over there, wow. Good luck to you. What do you think of what we're doing, Neil? I said to him, I said, I don't hear it, but obviously, you know, you got you got a, a, a diary. You got some diaries. You got a, you got a trend. You suck, Joel, okay? Radio sucks. This market blows. It's an embarrassment. It's a disgrace. The crap that's on the air as an excuse for radio. And then take it from me, somebody that used to work in radio. Even George once upon a time worked in real radio. Uh, I remember that. This is the Neil Rogers Show. <laughs> This is your brain. Any questions? 
And now, a word from Hillary Clinton. Recently, people in the media have decided to knock me for showing some cleavage. If I may, I'd like to respond to these boobs. Any political campaign is full of peaks and valleys. If I couldn't take a little criticism, my supporters would head for the hills and bury their faces. But as you can see, I remain firm. I will pursue my plans to lift up the country's most visible assets. On taxes, I will be as low-cut as possible. I believe the sky is the limit for America. Our future is virtually topless. Keeping abreast of the latest polls shows my opponents are sagging. And, as I always tell my male supporters, I'm up here. So won't you join the Hillary Clinton cleavage campaign? The excitement is spilling over. <laughs> you said a mouthful, Hill. <laughs> Although, as I always say, more than a mouthful is a waste. <laughs> oh, Bill. I'm kind of serious here. 1102 at 560 WQAM. You know where your audience is. It's 1102. You ever seen those bumper stickers? You know yeah. where your audience is? Not lately, oh, we, we know that they're not on the phone. I guarantee you that because there isn't one call on the board. I was just about to reach over here and start a real rush, if you pardon that expression, on calls. There isn't any. There ain't, there ain't none. You, are you experiencing uh, blackouts like this, too, on the phone? Oh, yeah. Are you kidding me? 5670560. Oh, See, a week ago today, I decided, hey, it would be really good. Wasn't it a week ago today to take the call again? Or was it two weeks? Something like that. Yeah, something week, like that. Very, I mean, can a week you can't even remember calling me on Saturday morning. No. And the audience has been clamoring, screaming, shrying, carrying on. Oh, we want the calls back. We don't want to hear you sitting reading uh, bedtime stories for us. So here you go. And as usual, they have nothing to say. Let me just see if they're working because they're extraordinarily dead. 878 votes on the poll. We're going to make our 1,000 today. That's all we care about is getting paid and getting to 1,000 votes on the poll. Everything else is caca. I'll give the numbers one more time and then... Uh, We're going to simulcast CNN and give you CNN audio. 5670560. Oh, or we could put some horse racing on. That would that would blow out whatever little audience we got left. The one at appropriate charm was second, then finishing the third. There is Gary the Guy third. from Four Grand River Racetrack. Racetrack who thinks he's really swell. Uh, plastic uh, a-hole. Not that anybody would know who that is. What a guy. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. How you doing? Okay, sir. Um, I'll tell you what, man. I'm at work here. I'm a I'm a dump truck driver, and um, I'm wearing nothing but my work boots. Yeah. That's it's really liberating. It feels good on my uh... on your uh, on your dumper. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the Verizon and Singular wireless line. WQAM. Hello. QAM. And a happy good morning. How are we doing out there? Okay, sir. Well, real good. I just wanted to share with you a uh, uh, pretty darn good uh, bumper sticker I just saw in this uh, crazy South Florida traffic. It's the only one that makes sense that I've seen in a while. Yeah. It's, it, what it is, it's uh, the ABC the bad government. Ashcroft, Bush, Cheney. <laughs> Thought I'd share it with you folks. Uh, Y'all have a good, good okay, day. Okay, and you have a great day, too. See you around, buddy. Here's another rock and roll talk show guy. All right. But at least he uh, had something to say a little bit, nothing great. And that was it. Yeah, we'll take it compared to... Uh, compared you know, to the uh, blank photo we got on there now. This, this is, this is uh, you know, the handwriting is on the wall there, Joe. You've done it. And I've been screaming about it and hollering and carrying on. And nobody will listen to anything that I say because what could I possibly know? And because it's got nothing to do with sports and because uh, they're a bunch of hard asses. They're the experts and we're just a bunch of peons. And so they pee on us all they can. Joe Bell has got to be the most in he's like he's like a rock. He's like a brick. You ever heard that expression? I'm sure you have. It's like talking to a rock. Mm -hmm. that, that's him. You cannot penetrate, you cannot get through, you cannot make any uh, headway, you cannot get through to this guy. Well, I don't know what to tell you, Neil. I don't know what to tell you. In the meantime, I'm getting overtures from Joel Feinberg wants to meet me. I don't want to meet you either, okay? Like I said, frying pan into the fire. Like going from purgatory into hell. So that guy that called before, well, isn't there another station that you could, uh, no. yeah, maybe Exxon, that I can go pump gas. WQAM, hello. Hello. Q QAM, yes, sir. Neil. Yeah. How are you this morning? Okay, how are you this no, morning, uh, sir? I just have a suggestion. Don't, don't, I'm okay. Uh, don't take me wrong. Uh, I, 
I think you should uh, talk a little bit more sports on your radio. No, no, because, this isn't I mean, a sports show. Rating. This is not a sports show, sir. We have the highest ratings on the radio station and have had for 10 years, and that's because we don't talk about sports. I don't think so. I think you're wrong. You think I'm wrong about what? Yes. I just made it up about yeah. the numbers? Yeah, I just made it up. I'm wrong. You're right. I'm wrong. You're a jackass, okay? Go take the ball, whichever one, ball, football, soccer ball, Rectum. basketball, Rectum. and shove them all up in there, okay, and have a party in your uh, pants. Five six seven oh five sixty. That must be a buddy of uh, OJ, you think? Must of course, be. I didn't, I didn't say which OJ. Now, what's with line one? Is that dead again? or what? No, it seems to work, but why does that one never uh, do anything? I think it works. It's just it's like the last line. Yeah. So it comes in two, three, four. It's then the one. last line is right. line one. They don't come in in that order. Yeah. Yes. Oh. Like there's we have Dave lines. We have De Broward lines. I think line yeah. one is now the last. Well, which which ones line. are the Dave lines and which ones are the Broward lines? No. I don't know. After all these years. But they usually split into four. I guess so. I see. Whatever that means. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty in the Verizon and Singular wireless line. The search for the South Florida audience continues. Joe uh, Rose is coming. Anybody, uh, any interest? No. Anybody know about it? No. I think on uh, what day do we know what day he's coming? I don't, don't even know he's coming. And he, he hates uh, Joel Feinberg a thousand times more than I do. And by the way, so does Defoe and everybody else that's ever worked over there. Because basically, take a look at what they put on the air. Sid the Kid, who's gotten, uh, you know, run out of New York, who was desperate to try to get back there before Imus got canned who kept schlepping back up there to uh, make guest appearances on that show. Uh, he's got no broadcasters on here anymore. Boogster, who's there like when he's not doing 75 ball games, doing rock and roll talk radio. Who, who's he got? And if you tell me Dan LaBastard is a broadcaster, that, that's quite a commentary right there. He's got a 6-3 or something like that in the afternoon. If... if if Alex Marvez and Ethan Skolnick appear on this radio station ever again, ever again, a terrorist will come in the middle of the night and blow the whole building right off the map. I'm telling you right now. Don't you think? Sure. Or and if they don't, they should. WQAM, hello. Yo, what's up, Neil? How you doing? Yeah. Okay. I'd like to hear more stories about you cruising in the early 80s and stuff. Do you? Do you? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> How about me cruising in the early 80s? Yeah, cruise on this. On like Princess Cruises? Yeah, uh, yeah. With uh, Mickey uh, Aronoff. On the love boat, the gay with, love uh, boat. Larry Baranoff. WQAM, hello. Not there. WQAM, hola. Hey, Neil, what's up? Yes, sir. Now, you need to get rid of George. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. He's gone. Greg Reed will be calling within the hour. I've decided to terminate George Rodriguez. These are good calls. You're right. The best. Well, we do have 887 votes on the poll. We're creeping toward 1,000. We're not exactly you know, setting the world on fire. Well, you know, it's going to take a while to make the transition back to entertaining talk radio. If Neil would just put the <laughs> collars back on and get back to those fun days. Right. It's sure a lot of fun so far, I'll tell you that. WQAM, Hello. QAM, hola. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. How are you? Okay. Uh, just so you know, you and George are the true power hour. Yeah. Um, I was just calling to say thank you, and I don't know if it's... Thank you. Thank you for what? Uh, for High Life Cafe. Okay. On your, on your uh, Neil deal. Uh-huh. Uh, my wife and I went on Sunday, and we are going to be repeat customers. Oh, well, good. I'm glad to hear it. Yes, and I was told that George... Thoroughly enjoyed the chocolate cake. Well, yes. I'm delighted to hear it, and don't call us again. You're a great guy, but very boring on the radio. 5670560. Oh, wow. And pound 560 on the Verizon and Singular wireless line. I, I must be missing something, you know. Remember back in IOD? Remember those days? Yeah, what, we, what part of it do you want me to remember? No, but I'm talking about the calls. And we yeah, had like of course. People who were like real radio, real talk show callers. I was talking to Suds because he was here on Friday about how each show would like feed off of each other and it was like this ongoing soap opera between the shows and the audience right. stayed with us the whole day long and, and people would call and comment about things that happened earlier in the day and, and everybody knew about it, what was going on, and everybody listened to each other's shows and it was like this just this ongoing 12-hour uh, fun fest that was going on. Right. As and opposed then we to here. Right. As opposed to here. Yeah. WQAM, hello. Who let the dog out? Sick. Sick. 
WQAM, hello. Now, that is kind of cute. you got to give you a little bit of credit. Bad, no. bad job singing. That's kind of clever, right? No, not real clever. I don't want to hear about Michael Vick. I'm sick of Michael Vick. Uh, he's going to get sentenced in, uh, where's the story I got in here? Somewhere. Yeah, but, uh, Castro's dead. He found what? Jesus. In December. He's getting sentenced in December. I hope they give him like 100 years. Scrubbing the pit bull uh, crap off the ground. 892 votes on our poll, and eight people say white people are most discriminated against. Oh, no, 6,000 Robbie Ducky Kids watering cans are recalled over lead paint. Oh, no, not the Robbie Ducky Kids watering can. That's bad news. I just bought some. Almost as bad as D. James Kennedy is, like, hung it up at Crow Ridge Presbyterian yeah, Church. It. He better quit picking on them Jews. You are listening to Neil Rogers. And fat. Lucidly. On 560. Two or Who's going to give Ricky a blow? This hour, President Spiro Cheney. And I mean that if Dick Daniel, he's agreed to let me embarrass myself with my usual line of stupid-ass questions. Thanks for joining us tonight. <laughs> That's a nice watch you got on. What kind of watch is that? It's a Breitling Atomic. <clears throat> is the alarm atomic? You don't want to find out. <laughs> that uh, a very nice tie. Your wife picked that one out? <clears throat> <laughs> there is one serious question I must ask you. Go right ahead. You uh, got change with 20? <clears throat> Allow me to answer that question with another, if you will. Sure, go ahead. Mind holding still for a moment? Not at all. I need to practice my aim. <laughs> <laughs> you will. Uh, Shut me in the face. A decent improvement, if you will. Now, apologize to me. My profuse apologies. <laughs> and I'm too soon, Larry. 1118 at 560 WQ. A little bit more about uh, Larry Craig of Idaho. Good. Good. According to rule call, the arresting officer alleged that Craig lingered outside a restroom stall where the officer was sitting, then entered the stall next door and blocked the door with his luggage. According to the arrest report said by rule call, Craig tapped his foot, which the officer said he recognized as a signal used by persons wishing to engage in lewd conduct. His right foot. You put your right foot in, you stick your left foot. And that's how you do the hokey pokey? That's right. He wanted to do a little uh, pokey and talk about hokey. The report alleges Craig then touched the officer's foot with his foot, and the senator proceeded to swipe his hand under the stall divider three times. So I'm sorry, several times, not three, uh, several times. At that point, the officer said he put his police ID down by the floor so Craig could see it and inform the senator he was under arrest before any actual sexual contact took place. He's married with three grown children, nine grandchildren. Last fall, his office publicly denied assertions by Internet blogger Mike Rogers, no relation, that the senator is gay. He said it was completely ridiculous. In 1982, he denied rumors he was under investigation as part of a federal probe into allegations that lawmakers on Capitol Hill had sexual relationships with congressional pages. But a beep, but a boop, but a bop. He's voted in favor of the Defense of Marriage Act, which denies federal recognition of same sex marriages, has also opposed expanding the federal hate crimes law to cover offenses motivated by anti gay bias, and in 96 voted against a bill that would have outlawed employment discrimination based on sexual orientation. Another sub hating fag like Ms. Drudge and like uh, Ms. Colder and like uh, so many of these other self-hating right-wing faggots. Wow. In other words, maricone. Eight ninety-nine on the poll. We're going to go over 900 this hour, you think? The way things are going, it's, I, I would say don't take anything for granted. Okay. That would be my best suggestion. Now, did you mention the uh, trend numbers again for the month of July? Because I have them here. I did not I mention the them. trend again at all, no. Well, I will. Okay. Because I think this is this is what the uh, public needs to know exactly what's going on here. It's it's called a forfeit. Since they're so big into sports, let's put into sports kind of terminology. It's a forfeit. We lose, you win. Here's the ball. Have it all. Have a good time. WQAM. Hello. Good morning, sir. Yes, sir. Boy, all those uh, page pages and pages, man. I just yeah. uh, wonder if he's good buddies with uh, with a guy from down here. Miss Foley. Yeah. There you go. My, um, my back pages. Uh -huh. um, I don't know if you've uh, taken a look. Maybe I'm a little on the late side, but if you take a look at uh, one of the local rags today at the Sun Sentinel, 
there's an article about um, about the state's ranking in terms of fat, mm -hmm. um, which I found pretty interesting. Um, yeah, Florida, I, I, I saw it on CNN for a second. Where do we rank? I think we rank 34th, which doesn't make any sense to me. But Mississippi, of course, which is no surprise, ranks number one. Mississippi, number one in fat? Yep. Huh. So... Anyways, great show. Thanks a lot. Okay, see ya. Maybe All that's right. why it's a treat to uh, beat your feet on the Mississippi mud. I better get that story going. Because I saw it on CNN there, and I thought, well, you know, they do all these, uh, which is the safest, which is the most violent, which is the nicest people, which are the biggest a-holes, and stuff like that. You think we're ever going to get over 900 votes on the poll? I mean, let me click it again. Oh, yeah. Oh. 901. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty. All calls today, I think. I, I do have a few things here, like the trend from July. Okay. Six a.m. to midnight, and I, I'm doing this even on the heels of Joel Feinberg making such a jackass out of himself here. Don't come to Toronto again, Joel. By the way, David Miller, the mayor, said you're not allowed here no more. Overall, for the month of July, Waxy four nine QM two point seven. In the morning, Waxy 4.5. Of course, that was Joe Rose who's coming over here. Mm -hmm. And QAM, the Kenny and Bo Show, 1.5. Oh, my God. Let me say it again. Oh, my God. 1.5. Oh well, what kind of a number is that? Oh, my God. Midday, Waxy 4.6, QAM 4.7. That's 10 to 3. So from 10 to 2, you had over a 5. We did. You and mm -hmm. I, mostly you. Oh, my God. Yeah, well, I never got that, that close I'm talking before. about sports. 3 to 7, Waxy 6.3. Oh, my God. QAM 2.1. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. At night, Waxy 5.9 and QM 3. Point oh. oh, my God. Oh, my God. As Joe Zagaki would say. Isn't that what he would say? Something like that. He'd say, oh, my, oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. Oh, my. God. Or maybe. Oh, my. Oh, oh my. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, well, you know something? You know who put it best? Who? Of all the people, and uh, you'd be surprised. That would have been, uh, he summed it up the best. All the crap you can unwrap, all the slime, all the time. That's our format at QAM, baby. Make no mistake about it. The, the Molmeister even had his thumb on it, mm -hmm. or in it. So he tapped his right foot, and he stuck his foot over against the officer's foot, and then he stuck his hand under the stall a few times, several times. Huh. He's, uh, what is it? He whisked it? He whooshed it? He swiped He swiped it. How do you know he wasn't asking for paper? WQAM, hello. Uncle Neil. Yes, sir. Two things. Sid Rosenberg's a crackhead, and did you see Dan LaBastard make an ass out of himself last night? Even no, Alan not. Holmes wanted to slap him. He was defending Michael Vick, saying, you know, his uh, has something to do with it. Ah! Uh. Uh, even Alan Combs, uh, he's not a Berkeley-style liberal like this guy wanted to just slap him. Thanks, Uncle Neil. Okay, thanks for the good news. I'm glad you wasted your time watching that crap. What would that have been on? On Fox? No idea. Defending Michael Vick would make me sick. But then again, that's, you know, that's a caller. Who knows? 567, there's not one line on hold on that board right now. But this, this is, to me, this is the end, you know? This is the point at which at 2 o'clock this afternoon, I sit down in my living room, I put my head in my hands, and I ask myself the musical question, will I show up here on Thursday? The answer is yes. because the paycheck will show up again on the 10th or the 9th. What, these, what this crew, the, the, remember we used to joke about the morning wrecking crew? What yes. this wrecking crew has done to this radio station, and, and you know you can make a joke out of it if you want, but it's not funny is criminal. There are people sitting lined up on death row for lesser offenses than what the current crew, Jolly Joe and Clarence and Joyce, have done to this radio station. They just decimated it. I mean, we're not even competing at this point, literally or figuratively. Not even competing. No low contender. Rate. But we got the Dolphins, baby. We got the Dolphins. They're really good. The games are free on TV. Et cetera and so on. You, you would have thought the day that that decision came down, we got that all. You would have thought somebody just won fifty billion dollars in a lotto, wouldn't you? Yeah, but would, that's wouldn't you have thunk it to be expected? You know, I I mentioned this. The celebration was very similar to how it was at IOD when they lost the Dolphins. Yeah, and I guarantee across the street, Joel Feinberg probably was celebrating too, dancing in the streets. Oh no, no, don't you remember he was crying? Oh, the business. Seriously, I have talked to many, many zillions of people in my over these last hundred years that I've been on the air and off the air, 
and I have never talked to anybody as tragic and disappointing. I mean, like like a putz. Not like a guy who's like the uh, head honcho of a major market radio station, allegedly. Uh, a putz. A schmendrick. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. How are you? Yes, sir. Okay. Do you think the Dolphins will leave it on Yelvin this year? Should have yeah, been? uh-huh. No, they're going to leave it in your... Rectum. That's what I'm hearing, all of them. Holy cow, Aaron's coming. Oh, I forgot good. about that. What? That felt good. Did it really? Oh, yeah. 918 votes on the poll. We'll make 1,000 today before 2 o'clock. Mad Dog is on it, too. we got, like, an almost regular lineup. Former Panamanian dictator, Manuel, you know, that's my protest song. Uh, I understand I might just play that. that every I felt day. it. I feel your protest. Can you feel my pain? Sure. Can you smell my pain? That's my protest <laughs> against the aberrant behavior of Beasley Broadcasting, of these people who are doing everything in their power to destroy. They've destroyed the uh, sports shows, and now they're going to work. They're going to focus on us. You can be damn sure on that. Former Panamanian dictator Manuel Noriega can be extradited to France once he completes his U.S. prison sentence for a 92 drug trafficking conviction, a federal judge ruled today. He's due to be released from a Florida jail September the 9th, and then he's going to France, probably to the Riviera. Have a good time. Probably with Osama Yamama. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the Verizon and Singular wireless line. So what do you think? Was it Alex Marvez or Ethan Skolnick or Dave Hyde that put us over the top? Or maybe Mike Veradino? Did I leave anybody out? Ira. Ira Windbag. Well, that, that goes without saying. That, that was the beginning of that sickness. That was the beginning of the illness. Here you go, Clarence. Here's the keys to the kingdom, you silly little geek. Put a bunch of uh, sports nerds on here. And let's pay them, too. Let's flush that money down the toilet with M&M. WQAM, hello. Hello, Uncle Neil. Yes, sir. How are you doing today? Okay. Uh, if I can uh, change the subject for just a moment, wanna want to do a, a quick suck and a comment. You and George uh, say all the things that I like to say when I can get anybody to uh, to listen to me, which is not very often, uh, mm-hmm. because the things Same that you us. all say, uh, they don't want to hear from me. But uh, but uh, but you're the real deal. And George, while I'd miss you if you weren't on uh, Neil's show, you deserve your own show because oh. you are the greatest. When uh, when you start ripping on all these faker religious psychopaths uh, and, and and tell the real truth. It, 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 it's, a, it's a beautiful thing. It's a Mahaya. Thank you. Okay. Zagazun. Zagazun. See ya. Cox Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the Verizon Singular Wireless Line. All you is radio, baby. It's coming. Oi. 920. What did you think about that? All you radio. I think it's sit, uh, sitting fine. Sitting over in the morning. Bob and Tom are going to be available one of these days. Wouldn't that have been something if we'd have put them on? Yeah, no, 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 no. We yeah. don't want to do that. They don't, they don't have a sports show. They talk about the Indy 500 Not and enough. stuff like that. Not enough. But they don't have the pure sports show. That's what that's we want. Right. Pure. Mm. Mm, you can smell the, uh, the, the jock juice. WQA. Hello, Yes? You got the Virginia mug ones up here listening to you. Yeah. I've been listening to you for 20-some years. All right. I'll be there. And uh, I moved up here. Well, the hurricanes ran me out of Florida, Mississippi. I don't believe I moved you. up here, and I got you on locked in. I ripped the knob off the radio. You just keep on doing it, man. This is okay. Clem. I've been calling you. Okay, for Clem. Thanks for the phony voice. 920 votes on the poll. Oh, and speaking of uh, no response, the uh, MySpace thing, it's, it's yep. like... It's like, I don't know what just happened here. Like, uh, I don't know when, very recently, but we vanished from the face of the earth about two weeks ago. Other than the professor, who, of course, we both know and is a personal friend, uh, which I hear from him every day, and we correspond back and forth, thank God. But other than that, I, I hear from him. Angie Symbidium sent me uh, you know, a uh, comment this morning. But as far as, like, uh, verbal intercourse on there on the MySpace, it's just come to a halt. It, it's huh. non-existent. Yeah, yeah, seriously. It, it's come to, like, a, a halt. Not for me. Well, that's because you've got a bunch of uh, perverted things going on, you know. Yes. Yes, well, I do. Good for you. More power to you. Thank you. You're welcome. Looking up. Call me again on a Saturday, by the way. I will. Unless it's Joel Feinberg trying to get in touch with me. I'll find a better reason. See, you were all whipped up. You were all excited because you thought that that was going to be our, you know, key to uh, escape. You know, I, I knew you were going to say that, and, and I thought, you know, here's Neil going to be making stuff up again. I well, pass along that's all messages. That's what it sounded like to me. I, no, I pass along all messages to you. I right. presumed nothing except, oh. as a matter of fact, what I thought would happen is exactly what did happen, that you would oh, come to brother. that very same conclusion. I was what right. a schmendrick, man. What a schmeral. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. How are you? Okay, sir. Um, you know, I'm up in Palm Beach County, and I was watching uh, 
having combs last night, and I wonder who this guy is. And, and I look at it was it was Deb, Leb, Lebetard there. Dan Lebastard, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Lebastard, right. And he was uh, he was pontificating so much they had to uh, shut his microphone down like twice. He's defending Michael Vick, who's saying it was a racist act against him or something like that. Right. Uh huh. Oh, he's yeah, talking that, about racism. Is that the same Dan LeBastard who said it wasn't the Marlins that won the World Series in 87 or whatever year it was? It was the Cubans that won it, and he's talking about racism? Exactly, yeah. No, he made a fool of himself last night. He really did. I was just, in closing, I was just on the way to bed and caught the last part of that. So he, he, he's, a, uh, he's, not, he's not a good person. He's, uh, he's a wacko. He's evil. Okay, thank you so much. You're evil, Danny boy. You're evil. Bah. Yeah, the Marlins didn't win the World Series. It was the Cubans because it was, uh, what was his name? What the hell was his name, the pitcher? Levon. Oh. I was asking Chris, not you. Yeah, Levon Hernandez. I love you, Miami. Yeah. I love you, Miami, but not now that I don't pitch you anymore, I hate you like poison, you know. 9.26 on the pool. Before 1 o'clock, we're going to get 1,000, or before 2 o'clock anyway. You can bet Chris's life on it. We know what you really use it for. And when it goes down, you need to call Porn Squad, the 24-hour adult-oriented technical support experts. Hot damn it. I gave you my credit card number. What? Access denied? Screw it. I'm calling Porn Squad. Porn Squad. Our discreet technicians are familiar with all computer problems and with most lifestyle choices. They'll have you up and running in no time. Uh, well, I defragged your hard drive, emptied the cache, and cleaned off the screen. <laughs> also put a new box of tissues by the mouse. <laughs> You're ready to hunt milfs, Mr. Campbell. <laughs> what are you doing in there? Thanks, kid. Uh, don't let the wife see a lead, okay? Oh, <laughs> no problem. My mom does the same thing. <laughs> 24-7, 365. We're there when you've got to have us. Porn Squad, online and in most Press Buy stores. 16 till noon at 560 WQAM. Look at that phone, baby. It is smoking. Isn't it? Maybe that's what they're doing. They're sure not calling. Maybe they're smoking. It's nice to share. It's okay. I, I may just go back to, uh, you know, rip and read. Why are you, you going to rip him? He ain't even here anymore. I beg your pardon? Why are you going to rip Greg Reed? He ain't even here anymore. I'll find it. There it is. Oh, rip. Oh, Reed. I see. I was going to say, what are you looking for? That might take a while. 9.35 on the pool. Here it is. The most discriminated group uh, of uh, peoples against. Blacks, 213. Gays, 149. Ugly people, 121. Fat people, 98. Atheist, 86. And after that, it's uh, small potatoes. Jews, only 24. And uh, white people's all the way up to 14. Hispanics are in last place, only 12. How do you like that? Don't you think that's a little... Incredibly. Five six seven oh five sixty. Let's get these phones smoking. When are you people going to wake up and smell the daffodils, baby? It's like, you know what it's like? It's like throwing, asking for somebody to throw you a life raft. Yeah. yeah. Like being on the Titanic and, please, won't somebody throw us a line? Somebody throw us a line? And they won't do it. And that's what's happening to us. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil, what's going on? Yes, sir. Whatever happened to that fruitcake, uh, Reverend Jones, or whatever that... WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing, brother? Okay. Good, good. I was shocked to hear that your encounter with Mr. Feinberg, Joel Feinberg. You're the first person to have any comment on that. I spent the first 20 minutes of the show relating that whole ugly episode over the weekend, and you're the first person with any comment. Exactly. I mean, I, I can't even believe he went to that effect, and I was surprised that you even considered meeting him for lunch. I mean, he's a stranger. Yeah, that's correct. No, he's a he's a jerk. He's a jerk, which I think you ought to be able to relate to. Five six seven oh five sixty. Boy, th this is agony, man. This is almost uh, too much like work. Pump number. This is like old days. Pumping the numbers. Remember the over and over and yeah, on ad nauseum. Pumping them, hoping it's like a, like conducting a one man search party. Is there anybody out there with something to say? And I thought this guy was gonna you know have something uh, rational to say about Dick Fine. Or, 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 excuse me, sorry, Dick. He's in Sacramento about Joel Feinberg and that whole episode. I mean, don't don't you find it kind of just bizarre, almost scandalous? Okay, scandalous. These people are like. Mm -hmm. Like that, you know. WQAM, hello. Why on these collapses that it's always it's always minors? How come they never send adults down there? Uh, 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 that, that sounded like uh, you know, born again. One of the cranks, born again. Different mm -hmm. material though. Nice, nice job. You got some new material. 
Five six seven oh five sixty and pound five sixty on the Verizon Singular Wireless long line rolling along, singing the same old song. WQAM, hello. QAM. Neil. Yes. How are you? Okay. Just wanted to check with you. You know, first it was the stock brokers. Now it's the mortgage brokers. You know, with this housing disaster. Uh, you know. You know. Uh, just, just wanted your opinion. I'll hang up and listen. Well, let me let me give you my opinion. I've told you many times before, sir. A fool and his money are soon parted. Is that it? WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yes. If you and Goldie did a show, they could call it Squeaky Queen. WQAM, hello. What is it? Hey, why didn't Miguel get fired? Who? Miguel. Why did he get fired? Yes. Because Joe Bell brought one of his boyfriends in from Raleigh, North Carolina, and had to find a job for him, and so they fired Miguel to make room to give him his job. Nice. Yeah, that's right. Beautiful, nice, it's, way. It's the Beasley effing way, baby. It's the radio effing way. It's the American effing way. Don't you get it? The cronyism effing way. Although I don't, I don't think Lee's from Raleigh. I think he's from oh, Fort Myers or somewhere. Well, no, the first guy Raleigh's. was from Raleigh. Yeah, the first guy he brought down That's from right, Raleigh. that's right. But he didn't work out. No, he didn't work out. He, he didn't like some the issues job. with him. That's right. He didn't like the job. Here's a fax that says, a fax, wow, is a follow-up to an earlier caller. In Monday's column of the Herald, Dan Labaster defended the most absurd logic, dog killer Michael Vick, since Bob Jolien in Coral Springs. Also, haven't heard Aikman ages. How about in the honor of the coming season? Okay. Well, we can play that. 948 votes on the poll. We'll make 1,000. That's good. That's a good start. Phone is dead as a doornail. Really weak. The uh, MySpace has just vanished. And they just abandoned us, okay? Now I know what it's like. I'm always talking every time the ratings come out. We've got this big, loyal audience. Well, guess what? It's not so big anymore, and it's not at all loyal anymore. You know, I mean, loyalty will only go so far. If we just had Alex Marvez and Ethan Skolnick on together talking about the smell of Kimbo Camper's bowel movements while he's tapping his foot in the tea room, then we might be able to develop an audience. The thing yeah. about Rome, no, about Nero fiddling while Rome burned, mm -hmm. it, ne never have I seen such a, a, a distinct parallel in my life. These people are, but a beep, but a they're playing the Stradivarius, but a beep, but a boop, but a bop, and what do you think, and ba ba ba, and uh, well, uh, you know. And Clarence has the keys to the kingdom. How can he still be there, you know? Of course, if Robert Griefer still be there, which is his boyfriend, I guess it uh, explains to us why Clarence is still there. The vanishing QAM audience. Where has it gone, Gloria? Where have they disappeared to? Now, what day is Joe Rose start? We don't know. WQAM, hello. Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing, Neil? Okay. Uh, regardless of what the ratings say, Neil, you're, you're still the best uh, game yeah. in town, buddy. Mm -hmm. uh, the other show that obviously can't compare to yours, but I think it's rather uh, entertaining. Have you heard of this broad called, what's her name, uh, Stephanie Miller? No, I've heard of her. I never heard of her on the She's not, I mean, she's not kind of considering it's that station she's on, you know? But uh, in, in closing, who's got the better ass, Nadal or Roddick? WQAM, hello. Neely. Yep. Hey, um, did you hear about this uh, anti-gay senator that got busted in the uh, bathroom? In the, in the tea room, yes. Yeah. Yes. What's his name? Larry Craig from Idaho, yes. Yeah. Yeah. He needs to burn in hell. Okay. That it? That's oh. it. Okay. Just want to make sure that he was out of material. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty yeah. on the Verizon and Singular Wireless line. What's his name? QAM. Hello. Hola. Yes. Dice. Hola. <laughs> oh, you scared him away. Sorry. W WQAM. Hello. It's usually your job. Hey Neil, how you doing? Okay, sir. Neil, I was just wondering, what's the deal? Uh, what was the final closure with a uh, Lucy and Liz episode yesterday? Are we going to talk about that today, or is I that tune in close? Wednesday if something happens more than that? Oh, when Neil's on the air, we don't we don't talk about the Lucy and Liz situation. What, who's who's well, me? I, I, what, what, what does it have to do with me? See, when George is on, you talk to George about the stuff that he's doing. When I'm on, you talk to me about the stuff that I'm doing. That's it seems the pretty way it works. simple. Yeah. Got it. I'm sorry, guys. Okay, you ought to be. Don't do it again. 
Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty in the Verizon and Singular Wireless line. Wow, we have seriously. It, the evidence is right here in front of us. I mean, you have to be a fool not to see it, not to smell it, not to uh, vomit on it, not to dump on it. Nice job, Joe. I'll tell you one thing about Joe. Some people come in and they do a half-assed job. He is doing a thorough job. He is cleaning a house like you wouldn't believe. I'm not talking about on the inside. I'm talking about on the outside. You catch my drift? Mm-hmm. WQAM, hello. I think your show and Georgia's show should cross between each other, just like the olden days. Isn't that what you guys were complaining about? Well, what does that, that mean? Would, that might get things well, going. Well, cross know, between start... each other? What, what does that mean? Well, I'll go this well, way. Well, you said back left. in the day, the Rick and Studs and the Phil Hanner, everything would kind of cross over and everyone would talk about it. It was like one big happy family. Because it was a, because it was a talk station. Them. Sir, this isn't a talk station, don't you understand? It's a sports station, and we're here screwing it up for them, okay, with these big numbers for 10 years. That's all they want on the air. They don't want entertainment. That's why they don't call it sports and entertainment. We discussed that about 100 years ago. Instead of this all sports radio, well, that immediately women aren't going to listen. Not a single one of them. What are we got about ten women listening? Five. The number of women we have listening when the ratings come out, it doesn't even make a dent on the Richter scale. It doesn't even go like, not even a little bit, not even like that. Sports talk, and then that's that's it. And the, I, like I said, Bruce Beasley sat there at that lunch that day with fat ass Jolly Joe Bell and Norma Kent and me, and said, "We're going to." Come hell or high water, ba 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 ba, and then, then they went out and got the dolphins, and since then we've been going in the toilet in the crapper. That was a great acquisition, boys. Let me tell you. Let me congratulate you. Let me uh, give you a big slap on the fat ass, Joe. Rectum. Tremendous acquisition. That's really putting us over the top. In addition to which, they're going to stink anyway. Oh, sorry, sorry, Wayne. WQAM. Hello. Hi, uh, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, I got a few gay friends, and they claim to always be able to identify who's gay and who's not. And I swear, uh, without exception, these conservative conservative guys that really, you know, uh, uh, speak out about gays, they they fit that profile. Yeah. Brown back, delay. Brown back, it, it's yeah. A, mm -hmm. It's amazing. Act them. <laughs> exactly. Okay, whatever you say. Yeah, I can uh, smell it a mile away, baby. Trust me, like uh, Miss Fudge. Oh, brother, the first time. Remember, she came in the studio that time with uh, Lynn Samuels? The first time. The only time. Well, whatever the hell time it was. I don't know. I'm just I'm just a uh, limo driver today. <laughs> I had no idea who it was. And I guess because of his many appearances on TV with that same silly hat and that same big chrome dome heads, you know, he assumed I had some idea who he was. Not that I could care. In fact, he impressed me. Although, now, that would be a shot. I was going to say he impressed me almost as much as Joel Feinberg. no. Sorry, Miss Matt. Sorry. You fairy. No, no, nobody impressed me that little. I, w I wish you could have been privy to hear the call. We would have said, this is a guy who's like a, a think, fancies himself as a radio big shot. It's like a, like a businessman. And then he tells Norma, oh, I don't deal with middlemen. I don't need middlemen. I make big deals all the time. Implying, I guess, that he thought he was going to make some kind of a deal with me, which sounds a little, uh, I don't know, a little sub rosa to me. Not that there was ever any discussion of such a thing, but it's certainly right on the borderline, like tippy tongue right around it, doesn't it? And Neil's been begging me to uh, rescue him for years. Talk about hallucinatory, you know? When you, when you have uh, an enormous amount of somebody else's money, you can run around being a big shot. And, of course, you can also uh, act like a spoiled child when somebody doesn't do the bidding right away, like when I wouldn't call him back. Neil's agent is jerking me around and blah, blah, blah. Remember, you, you forwarded that to me. Yep. You do remember that. That's, that's yep. a good sign. That, yep. That's good. Well, you know, I smoke a lot. It was early on Saturday. Oh. No, this was late. This is Brady Quinn. Whenever I shave my balls, I listen to the Neil Rogers 12 to 1 hour. Can't believe what I just saw that woman do. Reached up and grabbed my husband's junk. She's lucky I didn't jump right off the stage and then take her out with just one punch. Cause you know you shouldn't squeeze, you better let them be. Keep your hands off the family jewels. It's really kind of rude to grab his package right in front of me. Love what you can't touch, you shouldn't get the nuts. Lady, you would better learn his things belong to me. You 
Joe Sherman. It's 1202 at 560 WQM. 963 votes on award-winning poll, but don't give those numbers out too much because it irritates certain people out there in Radio Land. And at this point, we can't afford to irritate anybody. You'll be pleased to know I just got an uh, email from Brandon. Good. Not good? That's great. That's a there start. You go. And uh, Sean the uh, Mouse, or whatever he is on there, he uh, <laughs> sent me some preacher story that I'll pass on. Much too long and much too boring. But he, uh, you know, he showed All up good. there for a second. Good. So a couple of people are coming out of the woodwork, but not too much, baby. They've abandoned us. We're done. We're finished. Stick a fork in us. We're done. 5670560, oh, pound 560 in the Verizon singular wireless line. Phone's dead as a doornail. WQAM, hello. QAN. Michael Vick line. Hmm. Nothing. No. And that was our only call. That was a lonely call. It sounded sound like Mo on that bit. Where it says, don't leave, don't leave. <laughs> oh, sorry, there you go. That should do it. Incredibly. Where's the Michael Vick story? I got it here. I wasn't going to do it. He oh, pleaded guilty. I beg your pardon. He'll find stopping. out. What? I said, how's it going? He'll find out in December... What uh, prison sentence, if any, he'll face after a judge accepted his plea agreement yesterday to a federal dogfighting conspiracy charge. One of the lowest slime on the face of the earth, Michael Vick. How anybody could defend him is just indefensible. It's just unbelievable. It's a racial thing. It's a racial thing. Every time a black person commits any kind of a disgusting, grotesque, violent crime, it's a racial thing. If a white person commits a violent crime, then he's a slime ball. Then he ought to go to the slammer forever. Lock the door and throw away the key. But if a dark-complected person commits some kind of a heinous, heinous crime, well, it's a racial thing. They're picking on him, yeah. Because let's face it, all them, um, you know, quarterbacks are into dogfighting. WQAM, by the way, uh, Brady Quinn played good again for the Browns the other day, Chris. Sorry. Yeah, okay. QAM, hello. Oh! WQAM, hello. Hello, Neil. Um, quick question. I'm up in Palm Beach County, and I was wondering if there's any way to complain to station manager where this other Cuban station keeps coming in and interfering because there's sometimes I'm trying to listen and it gets louder when you're on, and yeah. then sometimes it's not. I, I, is there who to go? Who's there to go to? Go to the FCC. Lord, man. Go to the go to the Lord. Will you shut up, Chris? FCC, my ass. What are you talking about? FCC's got going to regulate Cuban radio. Are you some kind of a moron? Yes. Go to God, like Howard Beale said. Go to your guru. Go to yourselves. Go to hell. So that's another thing we got factored in there, which I wasn't. Nobody made me aware of that. The fact that we're getting all kinds of interference with our crappy signal. <laughs> like that. At least don't know what station they're listening to anyway. It's helpful for the diaries. WQAM, hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Just remember, you can't win with a black quarterback. Yeah, that's right. That's what I heard. WQAM, hello. Neil. Especially if he's in jail. Yes. Hey, Neil. Hello. I'm here. I'm listening. I'm hey, speaking Neil, to you. I'm wondering if you've been... You say, hey, Neil, up. one more time, sir. Yeah. Neil. Hello. Yes. Hey, Neil, I wonder if you are keeping up with the latest uh, court thing that's going on here, like the Elian... From the past, there's another issue going on in the courts right now. I don't know. Of if course you not. Keep up with that. What do not. I care about that? Well, so the it's Green a child Tooth, custody case. Green Tooth uh, Brigade cares about that. Yeah, well, you know what? Uh, t t talk to them about it. We don't care on the show, okay? Talk to the Green Teeth. Call up Radio uh, Mambi. Uh, Cubanissima, something like that. We don't care. We're under the age of 100, just barely in my case, and we don't care. Talk about one-dimensional, man, going back to the well over and over. It's like us with the dolphins on this radio station. That's going to solve all the problems. That's going to put a big uh, Band-Aid on, uh, on all the wounds that Joe Bell has opened up the last two and a half years, whatever it's been. seems like a lifetime, doesn't it? Yep, 100 years. Like a lifetime. What this man mm -hmm. knows about talk radio, what he knows about uh, what we're doing, you could put in a thimble for 4,000 of his fat asses left over in there. Do you, do you ever chat with him? Do you ever have an opportunity to, like, uh, have any verbal intercourse, anything? With Joe? Yeah. Uh, once upon a time, we, we chatted, and then... I don't mean once upon a time in America. No, no. I'm talking about, like, recently, no, since the... No, since, no, oh. no, not since, not since I uh, realized... In other words, he stays as far away as possible? Um, you know, we wave to each other in the hall and everything, but I realize that he has the same disease as the previous guy, so there's no hope. 
No, he doesn't have the same disease. He's just um, impotent. WQAM, hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Neil. Yep. Calling to take exception with uh, you with uh, you're always knocking CNBC. Yeah. Do you know that the uh, S and P 500 over the last 25 years? Oh, research, here we go with some statistics yeah. about the S and P. Yeah. Do you know that Ted David hasn't been on that program, hasn't been on that network in years, Neil? And you're knocking the guy. He's not even on anymore. Sure, he is. Ted David's not on CNBC anymore. Ted David was on a couple days ago. No. He's on XM Satellite Radio, but he's not on uh, CNBC anymore. Well, then they, got the, then they got the thing on the bottom of the screen wrong because it says Morning Call with Ted David or whatever it says on there. Uh, so uh, they got the thing wrong. Trish Regan, man. Well, who, so who cares? Well, you should. I don't care. They all belong in jail. Let me say it again, including Ted David. He was part of the well, crew that put that, because, that tech bubble over on the public. Get out of here. Go peddle your garbage somewhere else, Mr. Broker, because they don't come no broker. Then people will put their money in swill. The S and P, but it be, but it but it Yeah, come out with your statistics. I've heard all of that, sir. I've been through all of that. Oh, this stuff comes back so fast. Ba 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 ba. Yeah, right. You should live so long, okay? In fact, if Ted David isn't on CNBC, more power to uh, CNBC. Doesn't call us anymore, does he? Since they let him off at death row. WQAM, hello. Just give me the damn ball. WQAM, hello. Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing, buddy? Okay, uh, sir. I watched the video uh, you talked about a long time ago. It's called uh, The God Who Wasn't There. Right. Um, it was a great video. I think that all the religious freaks out there should uh, check it out. Okay, uh, but they won't. I know that. <laughs> and, um, you know, that's all I have to say. I'm on material. Okay, sir. So yes. By the way, um, the Virgin Mary. I okay, yeah, oh, good. <laughs> oh, you were the one. Jesus. 973 votes. Somebody did, I'll tell you that. Somebody did that. Somebody did the deed. By the way, speaking of insulting balls, yeah. the, U the U.S. military in Afghanistan expressed regret yesterday after footballs had distributed and kicked off a storm of protest because they bore Quranic verses as part of the flag of Saudi Arabia. The Saudis are all uh, bent out of shape. The U.S.-led coalition on Friday dropped toys, including soccer balls, into the eastern province of Coast from a helicopter as part of a goodwill gesture aimed at winning over support from the local population. The ball showed the flags of several nations, including the Saudi standard. A few dozen people protested Friday near the provincial capital, saying it was insulting for text from the Koran to be put on the ground and kicked. The resentments on Friday, it's an insult to our religion, said one man named only Palawan, who was one of the protesters. They insult our religion and call it a gift, another man, Gilani Senezai, said. Gilani, how are you doing, Gil? The coalition regretted any unhappiness, said a spokeswoman, Captain Vanessa Bowman. I wonder if she's kin to venereal Bowman. The distribution of toys was part of a hearts and minds campaign, she said. Deeply Islamic Afghanistan is sensitive to slots on Islam with days of sometimes deadly protest last year about those cartoons printed in Europe that were deemed in to insult the prophet Mohammed Khobam and Dreard. How do you like that, huh? Insulting balls. And there's just no hope. As long as religion is an outlawed all over the world, there is a... I, I still say that the best organization in the world is the Freedom From Religion in the Madison, Wisconsin, Annie Gaylor, if she's still Amen. alive. Yes, she is. Freedom from religion. That's what we all need. Not freedom of religion. Freedom from religion and the people who right. preach it and practice it and kill other people because of it. FFRF.org. That's the one in Madison, Wisconsin. Because let me tell you right now, and this isn't debatable. The one thing, forget about charity, forget about uh, faith, forget about, The one thing religion knows how to do better than anything else. Kill some people. That's it. A lot of them, as a matter of fact. What, whatever happened to him? Is he still on 850 doing some kind of dolphin crap or what? Do we I don't know. know. Do, we, do we care? I don't. Oh. We sure miss him a lot. Not. Nah. WQAM, hello. Uncle Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, you're, you're uh, on Ontario, correct? I'm what? In Ontario, Canada. Yes, sir. And how far are you from the border from, like, Buffalo? About 100 miles. 100 miles. There's a bridge, like, off Main Street, um... I think it's the Freedom Bridge or something. No, it's the, the Peace cross. Bridge. What's it's the it Peace called? Bridge. Let me say it again. The Peace Bridge. The Peace Bridge. Okay. We were uh, in Buffalo on Main Street. We went to some gambling. We got a Hard Rock Cafe. We got a Days Inn right over there. And, yeah. And, uh, well, that one night we went over to Ontario to have some dinner. We went over to that Boston Pizza there. Yeah. And uh, we had no problem getting over on the way back. Oh, my God. They, they, uh, 
we had to rent a car, and uh, we didn't have any uh, passports with us, but we had our, you know, IDs to Florida and all that. They took my wife and I in to separate rooms. They almost stripped the car, which was a rent a car. Yeah. Uh, it, it was unbelievable. What, well, what good. Then don't do it again, man. Stay the hell out of here. 974 votes on a poll will have a 1,000 in no time at all. Why did he tell us that he went to Boston Pizza? Is there any special reason for that, like we had to know that? Uh, I don't know. You can't complain about the pizza here because there isn't any. It, it just blows, man. It is the worst excuse. I don't know what it is, eh? Maybe it's that bad water they're dredging up from Lake Ontario. I don't know, but it, the pizza here sucks. Oh, my God. But that's my only complaint. Plus the fact that George got me in touch with Joel Feinberg. Not a good, that was unkosher. Don't do that again. Hey, I passed along all your messages. You were, you, were, you were doing a green apple quick step oh, all along waiting for God. me to give you a report. Yes, yeah, you were. I thought that before I even called him, he's going to think, oh, he's going to make stuff up like he always makes stuff up. Not me. If I don't pass along the messages. Not this girl. I, you know, that's the policy. No, that was good. You time. did the right thing. It, it created a little, I don't uh, you know, little your messages. There. I don't, it gave, uh, me an, you know. it gave me an opportunity to, uh, you know, hear what, what we're dealing with over there. He is exactly what everybody says he is. Schmuck. O'Neal, my queen. God. Hotel, the city known for smash hits, is at it again. From producer Dave Stern comes the NBA's greatest hits. Featuring hit makers like Ron Artex, Stephen Jackson, oh. and Jermaine O'Neal. Oh. And the hits just keep on coming from Ben Wallace oh. and Anthony Johnson. Oh. If they were back in heat, this CD would be number one with a bullet. So sit back, pour yourself a beer, then stand up and throw it at your CD bag. It's the NBA's greatest hits. I wonder what yeah. is packing. It's got to be pretty scary, I would imagine. 1218 at 560 WQAM. Oh, so anyway, you know, Senator Larry Craig, who's uh, busy tapping it. And yes, yes, too, yes. He's got three kids, and they're all adopted. Really now? Hmm. Hey, maybe he's, uh, you know, it was a war wound or something. Yeah, it could be. Shoot or maybe you just can't make babies that way, two guys. <laughs> no. WQAM, hello. Oh, Camille? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Hey, I, I two little <coughs> quick things. Uh, I had a friend come over last weekend from West Virginia, and they didn't know who you were, so I showed them the Wikipedia site. And on Friday on Wikipedia, they said you had died August 22nd. Yeah, great. That's great. And uh, the other thing is there's this thing in a... Uh, on, uh, on the MySpace Anybody site. who looks up Wikipedia to find out any factual information needs mental help. Yeah, go ahead, sir. Yeah, and you can put anything you want. Uh, there's, there's, there's this video about this, some house, this uh, uh, representative from Ohio, and he was talking that he wanted to pass something called the Ocular Penetration Bill. And basically, he wanted to, and this was real, he wanted to uh, have a 5 to 10% uh, cut down the rate of skull effing, believe it or not. If you look at it right now, the video is on there. Okay, great. Thank you for your uh, articulate information. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty. You know something? These calls, man, could put you into a coma. Oh yeah. Maybe that, maybe that's what Rip Van Winkle was doing before he went into that twenty year nap. Mm hmm. Or maybe a dirt nap might be next in order. It sounds sounds like it to me. Five six seven oh five sixty. And of course, the Brandon points on it's a good uh, good point. We got Labor Day weekend coming up. So this is like the last gasp between now and like next Monday, huh? Right. For a lot of vacation. Maybe there's nobody around. You think that's possible? That's always a good excuse. And, of course, he also kind of takes a shot at you because you two guys hate each other like poison. Well, you know, the fact that uh, you haven't been on that much this summer and George is on all the time. Because they all want to hear about Lucy Lopez. Who takes a shot at me? Uh, your friend Brandon. He did? Well, I mean, not, not like a direct shot, but like a little, you uh. know, a little stuch. I, I didn't know we hated each other. That's news to me. I thought you guys did. I thought you were always. I didn't like, know. Oh, no, no, that's right. It was him and no, it was him and uh, Cordis, Josh Cordis. Oh, okay. Maybe it's spilling over to you now since Cordis isn't there. Maybe. Sure. Whatever. Five six seven oh five sixty. Don't now you sound like you're wounded. You know. Don't take it personal. It's just just a radio show. Don't take it personal now. No, it's real. Five six seven oh five sixty and pound five sixty on the Verizon and Singular Wireless. Now we haven't had a lady today, and I'm not going to be pushing for any callers because I did that last week, and it was a bad mistake. Bad mistake. Remember that call? Oh yeah, that incoherent bitch. Sure. WQAM. Hello. Hi, Jeff Neal. What do you think about Buffalo Bulls? About what? Buffalo Bulls. Buffalo Bulls. Go have lunch, pal. Sounds like it's right up your alley. WQAM, hello. 
Hey, Neely, how you doing, buddy? Okay, Sorry, I need more, need more lunch here, a little pizza. Hey, uh, there was a little programming note on the History Channel. They actually had those guys from Loose Change on. Did you happen to see that or hear about that? No, I did not. Yeah, they, they were on talking about it. And, you know, it was like, it was called 9-11 Conspiracy and Facts, I believe. It was on a couple of days ago. And uh, they keep on changing it because some of the stuff gets debunked. And right. But some people were actually agreeing with some of the things that they were saying, like, you know, the, the popular mechanics, that magazine, whatever. They were debating probably about 75% of it, and then 25% of it they agreed with. But uh, it was a pretty good show. It was, it was nice to watch. You happen to see it on television. Okay. And also another good one on, on PBS called Buying the War by Bill Moyer was pretty good. So, okay, thanks, Pally. Have a great day. 5670560, oh, pound 560 on the Verizon Singular Wireless Line, baby. We are pulling teeth today. And it must be one or why I think it is. It's because the Kenny and Bo Morning Show is going off. Don't you think that, that might must have be something it? To do that's with that's it? it. That's it. Right there. I think that's what it is. Is going, we're going to lose a lot of audience out there because the Kenny and Bo Morning Show is departing after this week. No mo. No mo. Do, 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 do. Kenny and Bo. In fact, we got Kenny and OJ on Thursday. That to me is just that is blasphemy. That just uh, it's unbelievable. WQAM. Hello. Hey Neil, what's going on? Yes, sir. Uh, quick question: What happened to uh, Joe Rose and the whole situation? Uh, back at the other station, I heard he's coming to five sixty fifth. Yeah, he's coming, uh, he's coming over here, but it's a big secret as to what the day is, and we aren't promoting it. Oh, you guys ain't promoting it? Which maybe we can't because he's still under contract there till September third or something like that. So right. I'm assuming the day after right, September third. So like, because I was out of town when it happened. I don't even know what happened with him, and so kind of curious. He's coming. All right, thanks, man. See ya. And so is uh, Sukas is coming too. Nine eighty-eight in the pool by twelve. Uh, well, by about twelve thirty, we'll have that thousand votes, and then Chris can sit back in a chair, all fat and sassy. Of course, even if we don't have the thousand votes, he can sit back in a chair and still be fat and sassy. Five six seven. Here's that number again. Read my lips. Five six seven oh five sixty and pound five sixty on the Verizon and Singular Wireless line. What's your take on Michael Vick? <laughs> now, are you taking calls on that or what? Oh, uh, we took one, but it was a mistake. Oh, good. Thank God. WQAM, you're right. It was a mistake. QAM, hello. Neil. Yes, sir. How are you? Okay. Hey, listen, uh, I'm going to be at the uh, Browns opening game in Cleveland. Uh, I don't think Brady's starting, but uh, I was wondering. I got a problem. I'm taking my mom, and she doesn't want to go to the game. Is there anything in Cleveland I could dump her off at someplace? Do you know of? Well, what do I know about Cleveland? I haven't been there in 45 years. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I don't know. I just took a wild shot that maybe you might know. Dump something. her off at the lake. She can be the next mistake by the lake, okay? Just dump her in Lake Erie. They got a lot of other garbage in there, no problem. 990 on the pole. We're getting there, baby. Counting them down. WQAM, hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, you have a little bit that you do by Tom Jones. What's new, pussy crack? You have that? Uh, uh, they're on fire today. Yeah, you guys have really got the great image you're allowed today. Five, six, seven. I'm just going to keep pumping the numbers because I remember the days when I used to do that. We used to have big numbers in those days. They like me, although that one guy hates the numbers. All you do is the polls, the polls. It's numbers, Neil. You're mailing it in. Well, the phone numbers are numbers, too, but I guess maybe they're more entertaining. And if I just would be a little bit more creative, I could make them real entertaining, like five, six, seven. Oh, eight, five, sixty. Yeah, like that. Entertaining any literate. WQAM, hello. Hello? Yes, sir. Yeah, I got a question for you. This is this is coming from a strictly non religious person. Uh what what's the big deal with religion? I mean, what what do you find that's wrong with it? I mean <laughs> if, What if, do if, I if, find if, that's wrong with it? If a minority if a minority of extremists in every sect of religion that makes for the negative impact, but the majority of the world, which is third world get by daily because of the influence that religion has on their life. They get by daily because of it, or they suffer daily because of it, they because of the fact daily. that other people are persecuting because they don't believe the same fairy tales. Sir, you started out by saying that you don't believe in religion, and that's the biggest crock of crap no, I've ever no, no, heard no, in my life. I respect religion for what it is. I don't respect for what it is? I don't respect the negative A tool aspect. of hate? A what tool of hate and slaughter? What I don't respect are extremist Islamists. What I don't respect are extremist Christians in this country. But what I do respect... What about extremist Jews? Extremist Jews, I, I have a problem with every extremist sect of religion. But yeah. the majority of this world, which is third world, they need something greater than 
complete chaos. They, they need a fairy chaos. tale, is what you're saying. In other words, instead of giving them something substantive like an education and like uh, skills to get to earn a living, give them fairy tales. It's doing a hell of a job, pal. It's doing a great job. Do you ever hear su such a thing in your life? All the time. You do Wish from, from a supposed non-believer. Oh yeah, right. They're, they're called liars, first of all. That's correct. They By like the way, to... you'll be pleased to know, with the retirement of D. James Kennedy, its voice for nearly 50 years, Crow Ridge Presbyterian Church will move away from its founder's political activism and anti-Semitism to focus on finding a successor and shaping the church's future, Crow Ridge leader said yesterday. He retired at the age of 76 on Sunday and none too soon after he suffered cardiac arrest in December. D. James Kennedy, one of the most bigoted, one of the most obnoxious, disgraceful, disgusting slime balls ever to uh, grace South Florida. D. James Kennedy. What did you think about that? 9.94. When we finish this break, we'll have a thousand votes, and then we'll be on our way. Commandage, I f***ed them out! This station presents Real American Heroes. Real American Heroes. Today, we salute you, Mr. Vacation Countdown Guy. Mr. Vacation Countdown Guy. We all enjoy going on vacation, but you enjoy reminding everyone at the office every ten minutes that your vacation is just weeks, then days, then hours, then minutes away. Why do you, Mr. Vacation Countdown Guy, think the entire accounting department gives a flying rip about the precise time remaining before you leave for Cancun? All inclusive of noxiousness. We just pray you get sick. So the next time you're at a meeting and a guy says, I won't miss these meetings when I'm on vacation, give him a knowing nod, acknowledging that you can't wait for him to be gone either, because he's Mr. Vacation Countdown Guy, a real American hero. Mr. Vacation Countdown Guy. What does that loser do around here anyway? 1233, 27 to 1 at 560 WQM. We got 1,001 votes. Oh! Let's hear it, Chris. Whoopie All right. Doo. All right is right. All right. And let's see. Here's a story. U.S. preparing massive military attack against Iran. Who cares about that? What does it have to do with Michael Vick? Right? Right. Why would I waste my time with that? Why would anybody want to hear that crap when we can talk about Michael Vick and them dogs? 5670560. Oh, Boy, we got a lot, a lot, a lot of vacancies in the house, as somebody would say. All right. 5670560 oh, and pound 560 on a Verizon and singular wireless line. Here's our call. QAM, hello. <coughs> I don't know. Okay. Hey, uh, let me ask you something. This uh, Joel Finkberg, isn't it illegal for him to try to contact you while your contract is uh, with QAM? Well, not really. I mean, it's uh, a little bit unkosher, but legally he didn't offer. You know, he wasn't. You could be considered contract contract tampering if he offered me a job. He didn't do that. Oh, so he didn't we get to never that got stage to that point. He, he had a conversation with you. What? It didn't get to the stage where actually he sat down and, and had any any conversation. Like he that. had one brief conversation on the phone. That is correct. What a freak. Well, he's ruining that station. I hope he doesn't uh, try to tamper with you and ruin you. Okay, see you. See well, listen, if anybody knows about ruining radio stations, this is the place, baby. Oh, oh yeah. This is the place. And if, they, you know, if, if the train would have come out on Friday and that was the first time I would have ever said anything, uh, I mean, that would be like sour grapes, right? Right. But if I'd have been sitting here screaming and gnashing and wailing for, like, <laughs> weeks and months and, like, uh, forever and a day about these things, about all, all of these things... things then maybe somebody might say, well, you know something, Neil may have had a point. Maybe nobody did want to hear freaking Alex Marvez and freaking Ethan Skolnick and freaking uh, all these other freaking uh, idiots. You know what I mean? What do you mean? I mean, who wants to hear that crap? Evidently not too many people. WQAM, hello. Hello, Nope. Yes, sir. Hey, uh, I was just want to know about Joe Rose. I heard he sold his uh, ivory tusk to an antique shop in uh, Dania Beach. And he sold his ivory tusks? Is that supposed to be a joke? I, I don't know. They should let us know when it's going to be. Yeah, let, let us know when we're supposed to laugh, okay, sir? Call us back and let us know at what point. WQAM, hello. Deal. Yes, sir. Do you think the demise of the show has anything to do with the great one leaving? Yeah. Mm -hmm. WQAM, hello. 
When you have uh, Footy and uh, Bo Camper leading into your show, I don't know what what else you would expect because uh, Bo Camper is as boring as you could possibly imagine. There's a young kid over in Palm Beach, Evan Cohn, who actually would do a pretty good job, and he's somewhat fresh for this this market. You mean Evan Cohn, who's uh, fishing all the time? What's that? Evan Cohn is stationed all over the place all the time. Yeah, but I think he's more of a fill-in. I think if we had him on a full-time basis, maybe to, it's, you know, it's, at least it's a different sound. It's a different voice. And those Do, guys doing doing what? Well, what, what, day, what day part are you suggesting Evan Cohn ought to be on? Why, why can't you get him on the, the morning drive? Like, Joe Rose uh, is going to be doing morning oh, drive. From doing what? morning drive. Maybe yeah. in the afternoon. I know Hank's a friend of yours, but my God, he is getting a little stale. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. What do you think, Evan Cohen? What do you say, Chris? Yeah, sure, why not? You are now, come on, quit no, I, I, money, okay? I told Open you, I like Evan Cohen. Say something, you what? I told you, I like Evan Cohen. He's good on air. You said he was horrible on the air. Evan Cohen? Or somebody did, somebody wrote me, or maybe it was somebody on MySpace, I don't know, somebody said he was awful, just horrible. Or maybe there was a fax that I read a few, who the hell knows? I, I don't know. The problem isn't the personalities. The problem is the content. Don't you people understand, okay? I'll, you know, I should give them a break because they're not radio experts. They're the radio listeners. Just because you listen to the radio doesn't mean you understand it. People want some entertainment. They want some amusement. They want something other than just freaking scores and sports writers and the same ball, ball crap over and over again. That's a good word, ball crap. I just invented a word and I, just because I'm illiterate. You don't like that word? I like it a lot. Use it a lot. As opposed to bull crap. Ball crap. Mm -hmm. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. Same old tire with the guests. Oh, with the ponderous guests. Oh, Alex, you're so great, Alex. Thank you so much for stopping by. I think the Kenny and Bo Morning Show basically put this station on the verge of extinction. That may be going a little bit over the top. I mean, we've, we've suffered through Mo do, 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 do. and Geldy and a lot of other swill on this station. But my God. Oh, Alex, thank you so much for stopping by. And what's the broad they had on a couple of times a week that was also getting paid to come by? Julie? They kept acting like, who? Julie? They kept acting like she was just uh, stopping by out of the kindness of her heart because she felt sorry for them or something or because she was bored. Nobody's stopping by. Everybody's getting paid to destroy those shows. Paid, Chris. You ought to be, you ought to be in tears now about that. The kind of nickels and dimes that they're giving you when they're paying these guys to destroy our, our audience. Alex freaking Marvez and Ethan Skolnick with the smelly bowel movements. WQAM, hello. Neil, how you doing, boss? Okay, sir. You enjoying the summer break schedule that you got going on? Yes, I sure am. I love it. Hey, I just want to let you know that I think George is doing a really good job when you're not there, and maybe they should even think about leaving the uh, the, the summer schedule off full time because. You know, <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Sounds like a winner to me. That's a All horrible right. idea. <laughs> I don't think so. I think That's he does a, a good job. a crappy idea. That's a I think it's a great idea, sir, from your mouth to their ass. Thank you so much. Let's do it all year long, 24-7, 388 days a year, man. George, Monday, Wednesday, oh. Thursday, and Friday, and Neil, occasional cameo on Tuesday. Sounds horrible unless they pay me. 1015 Oh, speaking of paying you, now, did you tell the thing on the air? We can't, I won't say the client. But Gary Sarner, our yeah, sales Yeah, I mentioned hole. it. We won't Did you it mention again. that? Yeah, yeah. He comes to George, Maybe and there's a spot out. that was on the log yesterday, a live spot, and he, you know, for an account that's buying the show, the Neil Rogers show that I do. And he, I, I went to him because I asked him about that. I was going to ask him about that copy. Yeah, and he says to you, will you do the spot? Will you help us out? <laughs> and, and you said, yeah, if I get paid for in other words, the talent said, yeah, I'll put in talent for live it. spot. Yeah. And oh, he no. said, uh, "Oh no, no, I th you know, the next we we'll thought have to you move would it. help us just out, help but out. if not, we'll just have to move the spot." We thought you would help us out, Gary Sarner. You are so slimy, man. You're like the barnacles on the bottom of a ship. And believe me, being on the bottom of the ship is something we can relate to right now. You're listening to me. Thanks a lot, Jolly Joe. You're killing us, baby. Murder. Want a lollipop, little boy? No. Nothing left to say for liberties. You can't be bothered to read nothing. 
You might learn something, but that would mean you gotta be. Just keep those SUVs running. Save the lemmings and dummies. The price of gas goes out of the mean. The most corrupt administration in the history of our nation. But you won't see that on TV. That's not the kind of information that corporation who wants to do wants you to see. We are treading the Constitution. We are tearing up the Bill of Rights because we are telling Americans that no matter what your business is, you are subject to the undisciplined, irresponsible scrutiny of the Attorney General and others without a court intervention. Is that the former Attorney General? Now will you look when you're a lampshade or a bar of soap to me, the neocons nice and clean. Soon those rain trains will be a coming. When you don't care about nothing, they come for you eventually. Okay, everybody get ready. Tap your right foot now. Stick your hand out of the stall and grab whatever you can. It's 1246, 14 to 1 at 560 WQAM. 1,025 votes on that pool. How many say white people are the most discriminated against? 26. What about young people? Okay. okay. That fits. I think that fits the poll. Sure. What group in our society is most discriminated against? You don't have very seldom you see like young people discounts. Right. right. But you got senior citizen discounts, and of course a lot of millionaires right. and billionaires are out there. Oh, let me have my senior citizen discount. People who need like a hole in the head, or as they say in Sweden, like a lochenkopf. WQAM, hello. Hey Neil, how you doing? Okay, sir. I've got a couple things I want to throw at you about well, good. the programming. Now they haven't had a good. I don't remember really the last time I enjoyed listening to QAM in the mornings. Um, but what made them think at any time Camp Bo Camper was going to be good? I mean, I personally can't listen to him more than three seconds. You're, you're asking me? Yeah, but, but I mean, when they when they had their meeting of their minds, yeah. of, as small as they the are, meeting of their behinds, right? And they decided that they were going to go ahead and create this new morning team. Yeah. They did. Did they listen to tapes before? I mean, they, 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 know, they don't have, have to listen to, to tapes. He's been, he's been doing weekends on IOD and on this station for 100 years. He's duller than a 700-year-old razor blade and always has been and always will be. And they decided that he's the kind of person they want to put on here in the morning, and it was a dismal failure. All right, but now Mo is a failure, no? Yes. Okay. But not, not like these guys. I mean, Mo, listen, Mo on his worst days never had numbers like they do. No, I know that, but but I mean, you're going. You're. I mean, we could talk for hours of of all. The, I mean, Geldy, he couldn't even it, the squeak. He, now he's on seven ninety, and it's. It, I can't even. My whole my radio's about ready to blow up. Every time nice, he comes nice pool over there, by the way, Joel getting Geldy. Nice job. Okay, yeah. and, and in closing. Yes. Greg and Andy still hate you. Okay, great, good. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five on the Verizon Singular Wireless. Good news, thank God for that. And hopefully, neither one of them will send me a friend request in MySpace because the answer will still be no. go away, Greg. Twelve forty eight, twelve minutes till noon at QM as we're squeaking it out, baby. Oh boy, but I have to really come back on Thursday, and then next week, Tuesday and Thursday, and then a the week after that. And I notice there are big billboards. Monday, September tenth, Neil Rogers comes back full time. You see the big billboards. Mm-hmm. And the huge newspaper ads and gigantic uh, promotional campaign we're getting here at QAM. Oh, sorry. WQAM, hello. Hey, at the end of a hard work day, I reach out. Okay, I always whisper. When I whisper, that means I'm an a-hole. That, that guy always does the same thing. Like, like, like it's going to be some kind of a surprise when he hears the dial tone. Idiot. Moron. You fairy. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the Verizon and Singular wireless line. Very very weak. Have we had one lady call today? No. No. Not one. And and I'm checking the MySpace thing. There, there's nobody on there. I mean nobody. You know Sean mm-hmm. with the mouse or whatever that thing is. Felix the cat. And, uh, you know Angie Simbidium sent me something. I guess out of sympathy. And Brandon a couple of messages and that's it. It's got to be the Labor Day holiday. If it's not the Labor Day holiday, I'm going to tell you right now, we're going to start playing mu- music like September 10th. Hey, no. Well, no, if you, if you think I'm going to endure this every day, five days a week, I'd rather read the telephone, the Chinese telephone book. I at, least keep your, at least keep your chin up. It's uh, printed with lead ink. 
W Q A M. Hello. Q A M. Neil. Yes. Hi. How you doing? Okay, it's a lady, I think. Rectum. Yes. You better believe it. <laughs> Hi, George. Yo, yo. Uh, I just want to thank you for the anti-sports show. Um, it's so refreshing. I, I, I've been listening for a long time, but I never have the balls to call. So, um, I just—it's so sad. I think people discriminate against people with brains, mm-hmm. and that's why sports is so popular because it's easy. There's nothing wrong with sports, but it's like, who wants to talk about it all day long? To talk about the same crap on and on and on and on. It's just, I, I can't even relate to those kind of people who think that it's entertaining. Yeah, and it's like, and plus the sports people make so much money, and it's it's ridiculous. It's like, why? what do you care about these people? Let's talk about some scientists or something. You know? Right, oh yeah, that'll be the day, right? Yeah, I know. I, I wanted to ask you, I know this is really stupid, but... Since you wanted a lady caller, here's my stupid question. Okay. Uh, since you and I have the same taste in men, mm. what do you think of, uh, who would you like better, Orlando Bloom or Gerard Butler? Orlando Bloom? <laughs> Give me a, a break. And I don't even know who Gerard Butler is. He was in the 300 Phantom of the Opera. He's too old Not... for Neil. He would like uh, some of the other guys in there. 300? I oh, what, the younger guys? The younger guys. Do you like buff buff, or do you like no. uh, pleasantly lean? Pleasantly lean. Yeah, I like that too. <laughs> I don't like muscular men. No, not not for me. Too 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 uh, imposing. All right, we'll have to, we'll have to share. We'll share Thanks. one day, okay? See ya. Bye. <laughs> All right, bye. Five six seven oh five sixty. Brady Quinn played another good game for the Browns the other day. I think he's not going to be starting, but he's starting to make a little bit of a move there, Chris. All you naysayers. Oh, the Dolphins don't want him. He's a fairy. You fairy. He's something or other. You know, he, uh, we don't like his new haircut. Too bad. 1,031 votes. I wouldn't be surprised if we make it to 1,100 a day. That in the middle of the summertime and a week before Labor Day, that would be uh, just uh, unspeakable. You know what? You know what it would mean? What? Nothing. Oh. WQAM, hello. WQAM, hello. Hello. Yes. Hi, Neil. Yes, sir. How can I uh, compliment that call? Uh, anyway, uh, pleasure to be connected with you here. Um, and I've been doing it for a number of years, of course. And, uh, you know, every You've been day doing what for a number of years? I've been doing it, of course, with you for a number of years. And uh, every day is, you know, uh, pleasantly different. And uh, you know, coming from New York, uh, you know, Queen was uh, the you know the queen of media was uh, Miss Howard Stern in those days. And moving down, of course, I have the privilege of uh, of working in the evening, so I get to listen in religiously and uh, rub off on some of the sports stuff uh, when it carries over to the Man Dog. But uh, nevertheless, of course, I am enjoying the content. And I uh, hope you're doing a wonderful. Uh, it's very nice to have you. I, I second that uh, Tuesday Thursday schedule. Uh, yeah. I think George does an excellent job. I tune in religiously, like I say, and of course. Uh, okay. Thanks. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty in the Verizon and Singular Wireless line. Woo! Is all I can say. Heavy duty. Emphasis on the duty part. WQAM. Hello. Hello. Yes, sir. Hey, Neil. Hi, George. Yo. George. Hey, is the Rick Shaw here. How you doing, Neil? Okay. Okay. Well, I. Let me I say it again. You. George is still recovering from the last call. Go ahead, sir. Say something. <laughs> That's Rick. Well, I thought it. Minutes, Rick. Oh, Rick Shaw! I, every time you call, you say that, and I'm talking over you when you say it. Oh well, I'm that's sorry. funny because I was thinking about you this morning, and then being old like I am, and you are, I forgot <laughs> to say it on the air. You got out at the right time, baby. I'll tell you that. Hey, it sounds like it. What's going Good. on? God, not yeah. much, man. Well, can I do a shameless plug? Sure. Okay, I'm I'm going to be the local host for the MDA Telethon this Labor Day weekend on Sunday night and all day Monday. So uh, all of you folks will be out there watching. Hopefully, we'll help raise some money and find a cure for muscular dystrophy. I'm taking Chuck Zink's old place. Great, good for you. Yeah, well, it's going to be a long weekend, but it's a worthy cause, and I thank you for the chance to to let everybody know we're going to be out there helping to raise some money. So how are you doing? I'm doing great, Neil. God bless retirement. Uh, if I'm up at four o'clock in the morning these days, I'm on the way home. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like a deal to me. Take care of yourself, man. Okay, thanks, Neil. Thank you. Bye bye. Every time he calls in, it's like uh, you have to tell me it's him. It must be my old age, or maybe my hearing is going bad, or maybe he just doesn't, uh, you know, maybe he mumbles. Maybe you have hearing aids. Don't start with that crap again. Now, he's a great guy. 
Yes, he yeah, is. He's still listening. Let's hear it. For Ricky Ticky Shaw, like I said, he got out at the right time. When radio died, did, 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 a wicked death. And, of course, we got some people here at QM who are really working overtime to make sure that we are right in line. You know, we don't want to be out of step. If radio is dead, we want to be deader than anybody else. I, th- I think we're in the running. You think? Oh, yeah. Ba- based on what I'm seeing on the phone here today, uh, I think we got a good shot. 1037, but don't forget, we got the Dolphins now, baby. That's all we need. You are listening to Neil Rogers. Hello, this is Arnold. This is not a tumor. It's the one for two hour. Goodbye, Carl. You're flaming me, Ocon Halmao. Now you'll have more time for Jeff Gannon to caress and comfort you while you tickle his boopy doo Get dirty, pasty bag at you. And a lousy dancer. Bush calling you a turd blossom is the only true thing he said. Since his ass is where you kept your head. Listen to the party, Mr. President. You recovered in queer and prepare a fear. Get the hell out of here. You lying traitor. Say bye-bye and go hide in Doobie-Doobie-Hi. Justice in a country this love could still prevail. If you want to put your tongue in some Republican tail. Crack those 20 good Christian Republican boyfriends for you in jail. So I did my homework in NFL forfeit is 2 to nothing is the final score. I don't know if there's ever been one, but that would be the final score if an NFL game were forfeited. If the other team is suited up and ready to play and one team uh, don't show up or they uh, whatever, 2 nothing. Don't you feel like you learned something today, Chris? Yes, definitely. Beside the fact that there's nobody in town or there's no audience left or that both of the above? We do have 1,047 votes on the poll. Pretty impressive, if you ask me. It is. Five, six, seven. Can we do the one to two hour? Can we make it through? I I don't know how you've been uh, surviving doing three days a week of this. It's brutal. You know, I do my best. Like this? Like, yeah, like this, like pulling teeth. Five, six, seven, oh, five, sixty. Pound 560 on the Verizon Singular wireless line. A pretty grim and slim response. And then the one guy that responded to my story about uh, Joel Feinberg and that whole deal that happened over the weekend, he uh, also turned out to be kind of a goofball. WQAM, hello. Hey, Uncle Neil, this is definitely not Rick Shaw. Good. Okay. Wanted to get that out. Well, not good, but I mean, yeah. Well, you know, I get it. Um, I just wanted to say that the only reason I could see that anybody would be interested in listening to sports all day is if they're degenerate gamblers. That is the only reason that anybody could be so interested in men's health, uh, athletic ability, and all this other stuff, is if they've got well, money. Well, degenerate right gamblers, I mean, that's got nothing to do with sports. That has to do with gambling. Yeah. There's but, a difference between a sports talk show and a gambling show. Well, but I don't know. The people that are gambling, I mean, they want to know who's healthy, who's not, you know, all that kind oh. of stuff. God. I mean, I think it's that, that desperate. I, I really do. Talk otherwise, about narrow I, casting. Otherwise, I just have no no desire. I mean, I like to participate in sports. I like to do things. I'm active. I work out. But I certainly don't want to watch other guys do things. Like, I, I, it's something that George says and I agree with. Well, no, I, I don't agree with either one of you. I, I love sports. I'm a big hockey fan. I'm a big NFL fan. I even watch a little baseball this summer. Not too much. But 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 I don't want to hear people talk about it all day, you know. If I'm interested in the game, I'll watch the game or I'll go to it. I don't want to hear people uh, analyze it for uh, 20 hours every day. Well, that's fair enough. I mean, I, I've been to, you know, Dolphin games from time to time. And, you know, I'll watch the highlights and the lowlights on the news and, you know, see what's going on. But, I mean, that's it. That's enough. <laughs> that's all I can say. I'm out of material. Okay. I'll see you at the ball game. You bet. Five, six, seven. Come on, let's get a little enthusiasm for this last hour. Let's pretend there's some interest or I'm going to put hockey on. Are you threatening me? Yes. Where's my audio here on my TV? Well, must be, it must be a crappy Leafs TV. I bet you I can find a hockey game with better audio than that. Isn't that what we want to do? Because we don't want to stand in their way of... Um, active NHL player. They have always booed Yager mercilessly here in Buffalo. Well, too bad. Screw them in Buffalo, okay? Screw them. What do they got? 
Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the Verizon singular wireless line. The MySpace thing is still dead as a doornail. We're just we're just swimming upstream. Okay, let's wait till after Labor Day and see uh, how it all shakes out. You know, I or maybe Joel Feinberg put a curse on my studio while I wasn't looking. That could have been it. WQM, remember all the technical problems we had? Right, Voodoo or Jesse? That's him. Yeah, QAM. Hello. Hi, is this me? This is you and me. Yeah. All right. How you doing, Neil? Great okay. show. Uh, I've been listening to QAM for about 10 years, and I don't think there's ever really been a time where you guys have had a, a morning show, like, where, you know, before your show, that has really been a, you know, any kind of a winner. But well, uh, what, about, what about when Stern was on? Oh, yeah, that was that was great. I mean, you could just listen to him on FM. Why would, you, <laughs> why would anybody listen to him on AM yeah. at the time? You mean hey. the way it was all butchered up like a piece of Swiss cheese with all the dumps, yeah? No, that's the only way I'd have it. Um, why don't they just have you tell the story about how you got arrested for masturbating in a movie theater? Oh, yeah, we can do that all day. You want to hear about that? I'd love to hear about that. Cause okay, good. I'm real hey. happy for you. Hey. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. Just want to let you know, I like listening to you and George, but I also enjoy listening to the Mad Dog in the afternoon. Um, I can't listen to Hank. He's just too hangry all the time. It just sounds like he's always pissed off. And, I can't um, imagine why. Yeah, I don't know why either, but I mean, when he was out in the morning, I think that was really bad because nobody wants to listen to a guy pissed off in the morning. Because mm -hmm. we're all pretty pissed off anyway. <laughs> Evidently, yeah. Yep. All right, Neil. Okay, see you, Pally. Don't be pissed off now. Be happy. Put on, put on a happy face. Put on a happy puss. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty on the Verizon Singular Wireless Line. WQAM. Hello. New. Yes. Is that new? Neo, yeah. Uh, oh, wrong number. Okay. WQAM, hello. QAM. Going once. WQAM, hello. Hello? Can you hear yes. me? Yes. Yeah, I, I hear you. you. Okay, you're the best. I first started listening to you in 87, and I actually used to date someone who would hang out at the track uh, when he was in high school, and he talked to you with his friends, and he said you were like the best guy. You had your your stogies, and just had a great time at the track. Yeah, those still, were the days. Do you still do that? No, all my track friends are all dead. Oh my god! Yeah, well, that's what happens when you get old. All your friends are dead, you know. Yeah. So, what do you do to like get out of the funk of Miami or South Florida? Do you I, stay, I stay out of South Florida as much as possible, like I am right now. Oh, you're in Toronto. Yeah. Well, I listened to you for so long that I had to stop because of the executive type like you have at your station. I had to get satellite. Any chance you're going to satellite? No. Okay, well, I, I wish I had more to say. I really do enjoy Well, well what does that mean, I had to stop because of the executive types that we have? I don't understand that. Well, because of your programming. It really is not fun to listen to. I think she's talking about Joyce, the restrictions. The, uh, yeah. And? And um, I just but think you're, you are... But you're, but you're, you're taking time out to call me to tell me how it's not fun to listen to the show. Well... Uh, That's nice. Well, I really... I still like you. It's just... Um, it's just that the show sucks, yeah. Well, yeah, and the commercials and stuff. Now I'm used to no commercials. Well, listen, I hope you have a good time with your satellite, okay? <laughs> okay, thanks. Same. Wow. Woo! South Florida, welcome home, baby. Man. You know that expression, like I always tell you, misery loves company? There's sure. living and breathing and walking and talking proof right there. She can't listen anymore because of the executive types, and she's on the satellite radio. But somehow she must be listening now. Why would she be calling if she wasn't listening? Unless you just wanted to share that little tidbit with me. Five six seven oh five sixty. Give Joel a big kiss too, by the way. That's probably Joel Feinberg's girlfriend. He has a girlfriend? I have no idea. WQAM, hello. I have a large cheese pizza in the order. WQAM, hello. Hello. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Hey, Neil. I uh, just want to call you. Change to the topic a little bit. Uh, tell you how great our governor is. Uh, I'm a firefighter EMT out in Collier County, Naples. Yeah. And because of this beautiful tax reform of his, I lost yeah. my job. Yeah. 
you know, and me and alongside 15 others, we're all being laid off because of budget cuts because of the stupid tax reform. All to save $10 on my taxes. Well, there you go, pal. That should keep you going for a couple minutes. Yeah, I mean, he promised us nobody was going to get laid off. You know, no jobs were going to be lost. Nobody was going to get laid. Well, not by him. Yeah. That's for damn sure. Okay, well, good luck to you, pal. Good luck. That's the way life goes. 1056, baby, on the poll. Well, we're kicking ass on that. Not on the phone so much. Phone is as weak as could be. In fact, I can't remember the last time it was this. Uh, of course, I can't remember the last time I took calls, which is probably why I'm in such a good mood. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty in the Verizon Singular Wireless line. WQAM, hello. Uh, Michael Vick, over and over again on the news. I'm getting sick of it, Neil. Yeah, you imagine well, if he killed Paris's dog and took off an OJ's Bronco while being mm-hmm. chased by a coked up Lindsay Lohan holding Britney's baby then causes Princess Diana to crash in Elian's front yard where they bury Anna Nicole Smith's body before Terry Shiva's plug gets pulled. Can you imagine the news then? <laughs> See, it goes to show you, three hours and ten minutes, and we finally got a call. Amen. Castro's dead. Oh, sorry. The U.S. suggested yesterday the latest round of rumors of ailing Cuban leader Fidel Castro's death might have been started by the government. I would say that the Cuban government's always been very good at stirring the news, the, stirring the nest whenever they felt the need to, said Gonzo Gallego, a State Department spokesman. I can't say whether or not this is something else that is happening, he said, when commenting on talk among Cuban exiles and echoed by four news outlets, especially in Florida, that the alien Castro 81 had died. I guess this is the a big scuttlebutt down there, huh? Besides Michael Vick, as Castro was dead, which he's not. It was, I guess, for a day. Galego said he didn't believe Castro was dead. I don't have any reason to believe that. He's been seen in uh, photographs and eight videos, the last of which aired on June 5th. Castro's dead. What about Bernadette Castro? Is she still alive? I think she's dead, isn't she? I don't know. So if she, if Bernadette Castro were dead, wouldn't that mean that Castro is dead? Oh, line one, which hasn't uh, WQAN. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. I don't have anything to offer, but since I'm a South Floridian, I just called to complain about the other calls. Take okay, care. Okay, great. Good job. Thank you. And well said. Really weak. Five six seven oh five sixty pound five sixty in the Verizon singular wireless line. Well, I can just I can't even begin to imagine what it'll be like being there right now. The end of August, right it's before hot. Labor Day. It's really hot, hot, hot humid, muggy, yeah. Surly, sultry, angry, hostile. WQAM, hello. Hey, good afternoon, Neil. Yes, sir. Hey, you, didn't you find it ironic yesterday that all the news started out with Michael Vick when, uh, on a day when the Attorney General steps down? Oh, who cares about uh, Alberto V05 when we got Michael Vick, man? I know, but that, that says it right there. That's how sports ridiculous we can get sometimes. And, and by the way, welcome back to, uh, to On the Air. I missed you this summer. I thought George did a good job, though. George is doing a sensational job. In fact, we might put him on the rest of this hour. He's doing so good. <laughs> Don't go crazy. Hey, good luck, guys. See you, Pally. We need it. Five minutes after one at QAM. If you blow too much, you're in trouble. This is CNN. Tonight, it's the CNN YouTube debate. For the first time in debate history, questions will come directly from the Internet submitted on YouTube. So let the conversation begin. Hillary, if you were elected, would you correct the problems that George Bush created? We don't want to solve problems. And I admit, I would like to literally just knock our country off course. Obama, what's your opinion on the other candidates? This campaign can't only be about me. It must be about me. Only me. 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 Hillary, on the campaign trail, where do you and Bill have sex? On front porches and factory floors and in hospital wards, fast food restaurants and supermarket checkout lines. Everywhere I go. Hillary. What's your favorite hobby? Pornographic television. <laughs> CNN. 117 at 560 WQM. we got the Mad Dog coming up at 2 o'clock. And we got 1,067 votes on the poll. We're going to make 1,100 a day, Chris. You can mark that down on your ass. All right, I'm marking it down now. Isn't this going to be a banner day if we make 1,100? Yeah, no. something. No, because the callers have been brutal. And very slim. Slim and grim. I can't complain about the quantity. The quality has sucked. 567 0560 and pound 560 on the Verizon Singular Wireless Line. A town that hasn't had anything to say for, what, 20 years? Well, when's the least. last time these people had anything to say? Uh, about anything. I'll tell you when. Alien. Yeah. And then they were saying the it. same thing, but at least they were saying it loud and frequently. WQAM, hello. Uncle Neil? Yes, sir. Hey, how you doing, sir? Okay. Uh, 
first of all, I want to say George did a phenomenal job while you were gone. But then again, what do I know? Um, second thing is I work on a club on South Beach, and on Friday night we had a special guest DJ, and about 2.30 in the morning he actually played R-E-A-B-O-O-K, and about, I saw about 15 to 25 people actually singing along, so they have to be nearly. I'll be damned. And on Saturday night at the same club, Barack Obama had a fundraiser. Right. He is the man. He got my vote. To hell with everybody. Let's vote ten times for Obama. Everybody, let's go right now. Start voting. Okay. Take care, buddy. See you, pal. He almost tempted me to want to play that because it's three and a half minutes long, but I'm not going to do that. That would be a cop out. Oh, all right. All right. Huh? You don't play, dude. Do Double dog dare you? I keep forgetting. No, I'm not doing it. I think you should. I'm not doing it. I think you should. Any more than I'm playing. Oh, look at that! I knocked it down to the audition line. That's what, what? happens when you get all. I knocked this down. That. Oh. Oh. God. Come on, Clarence. I don't know how much you're paying that stuff, but take some of that money you were giving to Alex Marvez and Ethan uh, Menasha Skolnick there to destroy our ratings and give that to uh, you know some production guy. Chris. Come up with something new and different and fresh. Something fresh. Jesus, God. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing today, buddy? I'm doing pretty good. Hey, uh, a couple things. I agree 100% with you on that. Uh, we need some fresh material. That goddamn Bo and Kenny... They got to go, and I hope when they go, I hope they pack them a sandwich and take them off. Okay, great. Watch your language now, Pally, okay? This is not uh, back in the day. He said, GD, I had to dump that. Oh, look at that. That light was, like, uh, stuck on there. Uh -oh. But I, I shut it off there, fix it. Good, good, I think good. fix it diddle with something this morning. I think you should uh, grease it and the button, too. Okay. I'll look. 1074, man. The votes are pouring in on that pool. Not that anybody cares, including me, but never let, at least that's something, you know, when you've got 1,075 people listening. That's a lot more than some of the shows, speaking of Kenny and Bo. we got Kenny and OG on Thursday. It's just, like I said, forfeit. Forfeit, baby. Forfeit. That's what Joe Bell has done. He's forfeited the deal. Here you go, Joel. Here you go. We're handing it over to you, baby. Although at the same time we're handing them the Marlins and the uh, and the Panthers, which in the wintertime their nighttime numbers will be invisible, oh. starting with a, oh. like that. And the Marlins, of course, they'll lose their ass on that too because they won't be able to sell it. Those are the same Marlins who lose every day who are playing the Braves at the night. Correct. That's the team. WQAM. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. I'll tell you about the skating accident. WQAM. Hello. Neil. Yes, sir. Um. Can they take the square table over to Man Talk and talk to men about other men? Oh, I forgot about that. The square table. That, that them over the top, wasn't it? And you could have Ethan and don't forget about gay or not gay. And Ethan Skolnick in the tea room. Yeah. I mean, uh, seems to me Bo Camper spends an awful lot of time in the tea room, man. He's seeing guys diddling each other in the tea room. He's sniffing guys' bowel movements in the tea room. He spends an awful lot of time in that tea room. And you know that that little crossover you came up with with Hank and Mandich, oh. just not just not working. With Hank and Mandich. Yeah, I mean, your uh, power, power hour. That's our highest rated hour in the afternoon, sir. Is it really? Yes. Uh, when I hear it, it's two giant egos yeah. talking well, maybe, over well, each see, other. There's a difference. There's a difference between saying you don't like it, which you're entitled, you know, or saying it's not working, which it is. It well, is at least, working. At, huh? least, at least compared to everything else. It's not translating into Hank's. Numbers after the power hour, though, is it? Or or mandages before it, either. But are they really in the twos? Let me say it again. In July, 2.1 in the afternoon. Oh, my God. That, that's exactly what oh I would my say. God. Oh, my God. Well, listen, give Joel a big kiss for us, okay, pal? Never heard. Yeah. 567-0560, oh, yeah. And pound 560 on the Verizon and Singular Wireless Line. Ah, we're going to get that Rogers. We're going to put a whole bunch of crap on here. We're going to, I mean, as if they haven't been doing it all along anyhow. With the uh, fake calls and the crank calls and the, uh, you know, like the bitch that called before about, oh, well, you know, it used to be so great, but I can't listen to you anymore because the, the executive's there and I'm on satellite now. Well, good. Don't sit, don't sit on the satellite too long. Might get aspirin, okay? Rectum. She's on the satellite now. But she loves me, though. She likes me. She just hates the show. Wasn't that quite a little backhanded compliment? Or am I, am I just taking it wrong? Well, you know, we've gotten a lot of that, so... A lot of what? A lot of those kinds of comments. Mm-hmm. From people who pretend that they're not listening anymore, but they still are? 
Yeah, and people who still listen but say, you know, I still listen, but it ain't what it used to be. Well, of course. Well, we know that. We know that. I mean, you know, I'd like to see a lot of people out there who are, like, doing a job, whatever you're doing, which requires any kind of ability. And, ha and, and like, for example, being a pitcher in a baseball team, since we're so sports-intensive on this station, and having somebody come out there with a rope and tie your hands together before the game starts. What are you supposed to do? Shove the ball up to the plate with your nose? Are you supposed to kick it up there like in soccer? You're supposed to hit it up there with your, uh, with your, yeah, like that. With your bat, with your wand. 1085 on the poll. We might have 1,100 votes by the bottom of this hour. I'll be danged, baby. And we had Rick Shaw call today. Between that and those two things, what more could you want, right? Right. What, what could you want, like a bunch of calls? A week, a week, less than a week before Labor Day, and you expect them to be coming in here and getting a bunch of calls? Now, how would you rate the callers today as compared to, like, on your... Well, of course, you got the... What's your name on here? You got the... Uh, I have all kinds of uh, guest stars making walk-on appearances, right, Lucy? Yeah, I'd, bring, I'll, I'll grab anybody walking down the hall and throw them on the air for a second or two. <laughs> and you know it something? Callers. After today, I don't blame you. Yankee, baby! Because the internet is ruined modern music You can't make a decent song if you do it online I should know I haven't written a good song since 79 Yeah, my faith in you to got me so upset That's why I'm so freaked out b b b b b blame the internet Absolutely Sure I'm Take a look at that book, baby. It's smoking. They're ready to call on the board. We got a half hour to kill, man. It's just, it's absolutely impossible. Absolutely. That, uh, that we, the mighty have fallen to this level, you know? I think I know Five, why six, no seven. one's calling. Why is that? Because they're waiting to see who the Hurricanes are going to name as their starter. Oh, yeah. well, UM picks oh. Kirby Freeman as starting quarterback. Yes. You must be psychic. I just printed this story out. How did you know that? I just happened to see it myself. University, well, the reason they picked him is because Kirby Freeman is a hell of a lot better looking than that other uh, goofball. Who's the other kid? Kyle Wright. Oh, Kyle Wright. Ugly, baby. Are you sure you have the right idea of which is which? Kirby Freeman. Okay, I'm looking. I was just looking at this picture here a minute okay. ago on the Herald. Why, are you starting to, like, question my taste, my, uh... I'm just surprised. I mean, I guess... Surprised then again, I don't, I'm not gay, so... But Kirby Freeman just kind of has a couple more bruises, I guess you can say. A couple more bruises? Well, he looks clean and pristine to this old queen, I'll tell you that. He looks lean and mean to the old queen. He looks fine to me. Now, again, it's just pictures. You can't tell what a person looks like just in a picture, you know. But I guess you've probably seen him up close and personal, like maybe in the shower. No, definitely not. I w but I was reporting on them last night. I mean, the first time. picture of him on there is not very good. He looks uh, like, a, like a Yahoo. But then when you click to the actual story in the Herald, you went picks Kirby Freeman as starting quarterback, and he's got his like, lips uh, kind of like, like a little bit of a grimace on his puss. He don't look like he's got any bruises to me. That could be the only reason that they picked him. I mean, he's better looking than the other guy. And, of course, the Brady Quinn and uh, Tom Brady have established that now. You've got to be good looking and play good, too. If you're ugly, who the hell wants you, right? I mean, back in the old days, guys like um, the Redskin quarterback. What that was his name? How long ago? Tonto. Yeah, Tonto. Tonto, Tonto. Are you starting with that Spanish talk again or what? I didn't say Tonto. Did we make 1,100 votes or what? Sonny Jurgensen. Oh, I don't remember. And Billy Kilmer, they were both incredibly ugly. 1091, baby. We need nine more guy. votes. 1092, get with it. What? 1092, get with it. 5670560 oh, and pound 560 on the Verizon and Singular Wireless line. Is that what we should be talking about today? Who the Canes going to have as their starting quarterback? Wow. I'd rather kill myself than do that. WQAM, hello. Neil, how do you rate Chris as a fan? How do you rate Chris? How do you rate Chris Jones as an a-hole? I say he's like number one. That's what I rate. Way up there at the top of the list. You folks can do it. we got 20 minutes to go. And we don't have a call on that board, okay? 
five six seven oh five sixty. Has it really been this bad, or is it just my mind? Maybe it's just me. I don't want to take it personal. It's it's been bad. Been this really bad. bad? Yeah. This bad. This bad. They come in. Let's see if these, let's see if these are working. Out. Huh. And pound five sixty on the Verizon Singular Wireless. How about if we paid you like fifty bucks a call? What do you say? No. Hundred bucks? No. Thousand bucks? I'll call in. No. Chris will write you a check. No, no I'll call in. If I can now, do that. that might not be a bad idea. Let's have some. Let's have some fake calls like they do across the street. Are you aware of that that they set up fake callers? Uh, I'm aware that all other radio shows have fake set up callers except for this one. Oh. I mean, I don't know that for a fact. I suspect that they do. That seems to be the norm. That seems to be the standard. Norm? Maybe Norma will call it. <laughs> I'm not going to set it up. And we can talk about his ugly conversation on Sunday morning when, uh, when uh, what's his name, told him? Joel Funkberg told him that uh, he doesn't deal with middlemen. Neil's been begging me for years to uh, save him. Talk about people who are delusional. I'm not, I'm not sure who is the most delusional, him meaning Joel Feinberg, or our uh, management team, such as they are. I'm not really sure. What, what's your take on that? I, I, I don't know. I haven't had the kind of personal experience that you have with uh, the people. Oh, the street, so. wow. WQO. Yeah, hey, Neil. Uh, I see you're, you're screening your calls again. I was just curious to know. Uh, I, I love when you go through the numbers for the ratings and everything, and I miss that, and I know you don't want to rehash it, but I was just curious to know why the... Uh, why uh, you guys are so down on the numbers, I haven't heard. Because they suck. That's why we're so down on the numbers, because the, the joint across the street beat the crap out of this place in the last trend. Not in middays. No. They're, pretty, mid damn they're pretty damn close. Yeah. And is, is Joe Rose going to be on uh, QAM soon, or is that uh, just the rumor? As far as we know, that's the rumor. Hmm. But it's a big secret. We don't want to tell too many people. Don't tell anybody about it, sir, whatever you do. Well, I got to tell you, you know, I, I, whatever you might say, whoever whoever it is that, that may or may not censor your show, there's, there's still nothing better as a local talk show than what you have. So, well, of course, of course. But we're you know something, there, Neil, we're you know out something? There. the people in South Florida, they'd much rather complain, wah, wah, because misery loves company, so they want to wallow in their misery, and they want me to join and I refuse to do. Yeah, well, that's, uh, that is the nature of this town. But keep yes. up the good work, and uh, we, we, wouldn't, we wouldn't be the same without you on the radio. Thanks, Pally. Have a great day. Yeah, like, like uh, the, what, what's the price? The price is still right, okay? What else you got? You got uh, some, some uh, kid over there talking about sports? You got Rush talking his right wing? Look, da -da -da -da, the same crap, which, by the way, we still beat the crap out of him every time. But nobody writes about that. It's only, and that's because these people are obsessed with the sports thing. So it's like you would think that there are only two radio stations on the air. Aren't Isn't there? that basically their attitude? When everybody knows there are none. <laughs> WQAM, hello. Neil? Yes, sir. Hey, how you doing? I'm doing. All right, well, I've been listening to you since I was uh, seven years old, uh, 22 now. And uh, I was wondering if I would be able to expect you on anywhere else when you uh, leave this fine station you work at. If you can expect me to be on anywhere else, well, what does that mean? I don't understand like, what that like means. Like Sirius or anything no, like that? Were you ever not going to happen. And you want to know why I'm not going to be on Sirius? Because Howard's grabbing up all the money. That's why. They don't want to pay anybody any money. Why do I pay you money to be on at Howard? Well, good luck to me, pal. All right, man. You have a good See. day. They don't want to pay anybody any money, and that's the truth. I'm not just making that up. Norma told me he had a call from uh, whatever the guy's name is from Sirius not that long ago about something. It wasn't about me. And then uh, Norm brought my name up, and the guy said, oh, yeah, we love Neil. Neil's really great, but, you know, something we just don't have any money to pay anybody these days. And that's because Stern and Mel Carmerson are grabbing up all the money, and they're losing money hand over uh, wrist, and that's just the bad deal that they made. And, they, you know, and who knows if they're going to survive. Oh, there's Ted Kennedy. In Congress, let Gonzalez coast for a bit. And there's Alberto V05 Gonzalez. But what's he got to do with Michael Vick? 1098 in the poll. Boy, before we even go into the break, we're going to have 1,100 votes. And, you know, and as silly as it sounds, that makes me feel a little bit better. Well, good. You know what I mean? Not, not great. Not like we all, hey, we had a great show today. Like, things are really uh, hopping at QAM. But, like, you know, uh, somebody's out there. WQAM, hello. Neil. Yes. Hi. Uh, two things real quick. Uh, my wife and I are going to Ottawa, Canada in May. It's yeah. coming May. Uh, yeah. Have you been to Ottawa? No, I have not. Why are you going there? Uh, well, we have uh, friends that uh, live outside that live in, in Ottawa and uh, live in a country house. 
and they're going to take us around the city and that, and also to Montreal. Montreal's a nice city, isn't it? Uh, except for the people. Really? They're like the Quebec uh, people from Quebec. Also. Like, where do you think the Quebec people come from when they come to South Florida? They come from Montreal and Quebec City. Oh they're God. frogs, man. They're disgusting. And if you don't speak French, they don't want to know from you, man. Well, at least we're going to be with some people that do speak French also. Uh, also, today, I don't know if it's just me because I'm in and out of the car a lot. Your signal keeps cutting in and out and, and making all sorts of weird noises and that. I mean, are you guys aware of it? Yes. Uh, okay. I mean, I don't understand. It's, it's the QAM F and way, baby. It's it's uh, the way it is, you know. Well, boy, I tell you, I, I'm glad you're paying you enough because I would never put up with that garbage. What I'll am I going to do about it? What, okay, see you. What am I going to do about it? He would never put up with it. What, what am I going to do? Make a big uh, stink about it? Storm out. You know, send your paycheck back and protest. Now, what, what, what puking and popping is he talking about? Is he talking, talking about, about the, the digital thing that's going on now? It's on still going here. on? Yeah, yeah. It and how bad is it? Uh, uh, okay, I mean, it's off and on, I guess. Off and on. Yeah. It's uh, not so bad that you can't do the rest of the show? Yeah. Oh, come on. <laughs> it's like Mad Lib Radio. We got, that's all. we got our 1100. <laughs> 1103. So that that also adds to the uh, problem today. Sure, that's extra special though. It's for flavoring. Yeah. Brr ing. Is it that sounds what like? Sounds yeah, every once in a while. Brr yeah. brr oh, like a little digital, uh, like kind of like like that. Yeah. So what's wrong with that? What's not to like? Nothing. It's fun. Hi, this is G. Gordon Liddy, and they don't come any worse than Neil Rogers. Sports, 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 sports. sports. Sports, 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 sports. I like reading the sports section. I like reading the sports section, too. Yeah, the paper's better than using a computer. You can read the paper on the toilet. Yeah, I don't like computers, because what's I got to do with sports? Sports, 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 sports. We got a girl in here. Yeah, a girl. Hello. See, we're straight. That's a girl. <laughs> Girls are okay, but I'd rather stare blankly ahead and just talk about sports. 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 Drugs, lots of drugs. Is that what does it? Sure. I, 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 Afterwards. I would be in a, in a mental institution. This has been a real... Uh, well, drugs are cheaper. Know. You know, insurance doesn't cover that. A real chore. 5670560. Oh, we got a zillion open lines, and we still got 14 minutes to kill. Not that I'm counting, you understand. If you take the last four minutes out of the break, uh, like 10 minutes to kill. And pound 560. Let's have a lot more calls like that nice lady who called in to tell me that the show, she don't like to listen to it anymore because it isn't what it used to be, but she likes me. She just doesn't like the show. And because of the management and yada, 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 et cetera, and so on. And she's got satellite radio. WQAM, hello. Hey, what's up, Neil? Yes, sir. Uh, just uh, had to call about the, the current radio state in South Florida, which we both know is atrocious. Uh, a suggestion, a suggestion for you. Uh, for the stadia, the stations that be uh, after you and or George, which mm -hmm. to me are both great, get back Phil Hendry, and you could queue up the bridge tender to sum it up. Thanks, buddy.
Phil Henry now is a right-wing political uh, goofball is what he is, okay? He ain't even close to what he used to be. Are you sure? But nevertheless, there's a guy that, you know, he's living in the past. I understand. I feel your pain, sir. I feel the pain. Once upon a time in America. 1114 votes on the poll. My God, there's, I don't understand that. Do you? WQAM, hello. Neil. Yes, sir. How you doing, buddy? Okay. I called early. I called to apologize. I didn't. Well, what say, do you mean you called earlier? I called and I said, "GG, you had let me go." Yeah, okay, great. Well, don't. Once was more than enough. Believe me. WQAM, hello. Hey, Neil. Yes, sir. I I was one of the fortunate ones to buy one of your uh, prime uh, uh, blue grill a couple of weeks ago. Right. And I uh, took the wife on Saturday. Spectacular place. Really? Good. Real, really, I'm really I'm going to try right, next time I'm down there. Right on the river, right on the point. You can see uh, the tugboats uh, taking out the uh, cargo ships out. It's very, very nice. Beautiful. Thanks. Thanks for the lead. Thank you. Thanks and for the lead. I want some brownie points, which always is good. Where? What did he just say? He got some brownie points, which is always good, or something like that. Oh, whatever that means. I have no idea what that means. See, we're doing so good. And then right there at the end, it was like... Uh, he had to shoot himself in the foot. WQM, hello. Hello? Yes, sir. Did you know that uh, when George does the show... Did I know that when George with a phony voice does... Ah, blah, 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 blah. Here's line nine. It's always a good one. QAM, hello. Go, Bill! Yeah, good. Do it again. WQAM, hello. Hello? Yes. Oh! <laughs> QAM, hello, our last call. Hello, Neil? Yes. Hi. Uh, uh, are you listening to me? I'm listening to you, yes. Hi. Welcome back. Hi. I love you. I'm, I'm your Jewish Cuban girlfriend that oh, calls yeah. all the time. Uh -huh. Your closet. <laughs> your closet fan. Listen, I want to tell you you're the best thing on, on uh, radio, mm -hmm. and I don't care what anybody else says. We all listen to you. Yeah, well, screw them. Screw and we them. all what miss you. Know? And we all love you, and yours did a wonderful job while you were away. But First of all, I don't, I don't know why everybody keeps talking about when I was in a way. I've been on the summer schedule. It's almost over, unfortunately. Yeah, well, uh, unfortunately. So June, I mean, middle it's of about June, time to get, July, you got August. Back to I don't work. know what you mean when I was away. I wasn't away. I just do Tuesday and Thursday in the summertime. We're paying you a lot of money, Bill. You, uh, uh, you should always be with us. You should always stay with us. You should yeah, never go away. Say. That's right. You're a slacker. We love you. And George, I love you, too. I love you, too. Okay. Bye-bye. See ya. Wow. WQAM, hello. This is Jesus Christ. I thought they already got his ass. WQAM, hello. I was going to say nailed his ass. That would have been bad. QAM. Hello. Yes. Oh, sometimes huh? things feel good up there. Mathematics is very easy for me. Yeah. And... You too. <laughs> I always love that when you wait long enough and they turn the radio up to hear their voice on here. Don't you love that part of it? Oh, yeah. And then, of course, uh, they're squeezing it. WQAM, hello. Hello, Neil. Yes, sir. How are you? I'm great. I got a great idea. Get that nice lady, put, put her naked on the studio and slap her in the butt. Yeah, okay. WQAM, hello. Neil, good afternoon. Good um, afternoon, sir. I've always been a gay advocate for gay rights and everything, and I don't mm -hmm. like the way things are going on down here. However, with the with the alleged incident up there with the senator, don't you think people have the right to use public facilities without something? You know what I would do? I would call up Bert Camper. I'd call up Kenny and Bo tomorrow morning and find out what they think. Neil, though, but let me ask you. We don't really need to uh, stumble upon any strange glory holes or anything like that unless you you might know a good one down here. <laughs> <laughs> that was sensational. Yeah, I saw that coming. Did you really? Oh, well, sure. you know what? You're looking for glory holes. Right. And then hopefully you'll find a good one. Your first one will be a masculine one. At least the first uh, thing that pops through there, whatever pops. Well, anyway, here's what Pop says. We have 1,116 votes on the poll, which is pretty impressive considering the fact that they're buying any calls today. Well, you know what it is. It's uh, that thing. Well, you weren't taking any calls for a long time. Plus, now we're screening the calls, see? I mean, I don't know anything, so obviously doing, the, doing it the way I was before, uh, you know, the screenless thing for years and years and years, that was no good. That's what Joe Bell decided. And so you're going to screen the calls, and, of course, they don't want that. 
So that makes it like a hundred times harder to get people to call. You follow what I'm saying? No. What are you saying? I'm saying that I'm glad it's over. Here's the poll. Which group in our society is the most discriminated against? Blacks, 248. Like uh, poor Michael Vick, for example. 50 years. Gays, 173. Ugly people, 139. Fat people, 114. Atheist, 104. Wouldn't that be a good station, Atheist 104? Sure. Muslims, 58. Handicraft people, 53. Immigrants, 47. White people, 44. How do you like that, Professor? Moved all the way up to 44 from nowhere. Jews, 31. The elderly. About 30, man. Short people, 23. Women, 16. Hispanics, only 14. Solamente 14. Dumb people, 14. And young people, only one. Unless, of course, you live in South Florida, when anybody under the age of 100 is discriminated against, or just by the very fact of being there. You are listening to me, 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 Rogers. Seven steps drop. One moment, please. What the hell was that? I don't know. What'd you do? Something strange happened. It's Joel and the voodoo doll, baby. He's got his, he's got his thumb in it right now. Rectum. I turned 13 on my last birthday. Bye! 